Hi everybody, I'm Pabs, a Rising VTuber and an artist, and today we're going to be drawing another art fight piece. Uh, today we're going to be drawing my, actually my friend's character, my friend Toast's character, by which I mean I'm just going to be drawing him. <laughs> He's a cool guy, you should definitely go follow him on Twitter and the Twitch and everywhere you can find the name Toast or Pop. But yeah, I, I think this will be a nice way to kind of close off um, this year's art fight. I'm not planning on doing any more art fight streams. I'm not planning on drawing any more art fight pieces after today. I think, I think like with this one, we'll have reached, uh, about like maybe 10. I think 10 is about the number that we've reached. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I am content with that figure. That is a fine number to end out on, you know, very even, not too many, not too little. Actually, it's kind of a lot, you know, 10, 10 pieces in one month. I feel pretty good about that. I'm feeling very proud of myself. But, uh, you know, it won't be 10 until we finish this drawing, so let's get into it, huh? Alright, let's head on over to the working screen. Whoop. Okay, there we go. Okay, I always I always get a little mixed up about how to uh, position myself here. There we go, that seems, that seems re very reasonable. Okay. Ooh, very crunchy wrists. <sighs> well, let me tell you. I really like Toast's... I really like the designs that Toast makes. He knows much more about fashion than I do, so all of them look very trendy. Uh, okay, so maybe like smaller. There we go, so that we can see the canvas a little better. Perfect. Okay. Now we're gonna have to figure out a pose for this. So we'll 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 do the usual thing where we just kind of scroll across them. <laughs> I think one of these, like, idle poses would be good for him. I've drawn a lot of people, like, crouching down or bent down, so I feel like today I want to do one that's kind of more... You know, kind of, like, more stood up, you know? More vertical. That's the word that I was looking for, vertical. <laughs> I don't know why vertical was such a struggle for me to find. Uh... Hmm. I mean, can you blame me though? Some of these are very cool looking. <laughs> like the ones where they're crouched down. This, I'm kind of feeling this one. This one's this one seems kind of fun. Yeah, th this one this one has a very good kind of flow of it. What do you call that kind of a kinetic chain? Yeah, I remember that a lot of people. I remember one person saying that, you know, sometimes people ask themselves, like, what is my art trademark? Or what is this, what is something that you notice about your art that is maybe very obvious, almost like immediately to people who see it for the first time? And a friend of mine, I shared one of those posts, and a friend of mine told me that they noticed that I really like martial arts. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously I do. I talk about them all the time here. But on a more kind of deeper level, like I'm very, I'm very obsessed with poses that let you, that have like a very clear kind of line of action like this. I really like them a lot. Okay, what about like? Okay, I think I'm gonna bend the knee here a little bit, and that way I can kind of almost. Oh nope nope nope! I don't like how that's turning. There we go. That's more like it. Hmm. I feel like I should almost zoom it in more. It's very difficult because this is very obviously like this might be a bit easier on a canvas that's kind of wider like this, but I kind of insist on having square canvases. I don't know why. I think it's because it's easier for me to kind of wrap my head around a square canvas. You know, it's easier for me to make a square canvas than <clears throat> try and fill it out with the pose itself rather than, make, than choose the pose first and then pick out a canvas. You know, I feel like maybe I should be more flexible with that. I think that I think that might be a deficit in my 
kind of a process. And what's it look like with the original pose? Hang on. What's it look like with the, like, original pose? Actually, this one's fun, too. Oh, man, these are really good poses. Um... <laughs> It looks like... I never... I didn't grow up during the era where these kind of like glam metal bands like KISS and everything were popular. I don't know if KISS is technically popular anymore. <laughs> I don't think they've released music in like... Has KISS been active recently? I know there's been... I know that they are f infamous for having like a bunch of members who aren't actually part of the band. I know that, I know that that's like a meme among boomers <laughs> like... Oh yeah, this guy's a part of KISS. He didn't- he never- he played with them like once, but yeah, he's- he's a part of KISS. You know, I had a cousin that was a part of KISS. And that kind of thing. I didn't have a cousin who was a part of KISS. I don't think KISS ever toured in my home country. And if they did, I don't think my cousins went to see them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Stolen Valor. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of feeling it more like on this kind of side like this. Yeah, all right. Okay. Then, okay, we'll lower the opacity of this. Start a new vector layer. And have this reference kind of around here where it's not gonna, like, cl where, where it's not gonna kind of intersect with the model too much. Where's my pen? <laughs> there it is. Okay, cool. I don't think I've actually listened to a song by Kiss either. You know, I, I keep, you know, they're um they're one of those bands where like you hear a bunch of people like talk about them. It's one of those bands where their where their look is more iconic than their actual music. I feel like that's the case for them. You know, because I've seen I've seen a bunch of people wear like black and white makeup who aren't who definitely aren't juggalos so that's kind of, i feel like you know that's maybe indicative that maybe they're i don't know what that indicates i mean on the other hand though it's much easier to replicate a you know it's much easier and you know probably less copyright fraught to replicate a bit of makeup than it is to replicate an entire like soundscape So he's got hair that's very kind of, uh, I, I don't know how to put it, like very sharp individual parts. I don't know how to put, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the hair is pointy. That's, I think that's the best word. This, okay, I need to actually put this somewhere up here. Whoop. Okay, there we go. That should help. The, yeah, the hair is just pointy. I don't know how else, I don't know what other descriptor I have for that. That's pointy hair. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think he I think he only has those pure things on his ears and on the nose here. Okay. Hang on. There we go. Okay, then over here. I think I made this this piercing a little too tall. There we go. Hmm. What do the eyes look like again? I think that I think they actually I think he actually included a a reference for the eye. Yeah, there it is. He also has a little reference here for Jam, which is his mascot. Hmm. 
Okay, very kind of long wing tips there. I see a super close-up eye like this it reminds me a lot of the wikipedia <clears throat> the wikipedia logo for anime so i actually i actually had to when i was a kid i didn't know what anime was right i uh, that this was like way way long ago this is when i was like first learning english and i didn't had no idea what like anime was I, i'd watched anime i I'd, I'd watched pokemon i watched like one piece episodes but I didn't know what anime was, right? I don't know how I learned that word. Mm. Now, something about this makes it look like he's just got very tired eyes. Mm. I might just uh, cut, cut and take a little bit of the uh, reference here. There we go. But yeah, if you've never... Just popping in to enforce self-care. Well, thank you. Okay, let me get this... Hua. Spine straightened. Water sipped. Thank you, Emerald Ninja. Okay. So... What was I doing? Right. I was talking about the Wikipedia logo. <coughs> for anime and it actually has a little anime eye icon hang on yeah this if you look if you look up anime on wikipedia it this is a kind of like anime portal image that it has which if you think about it is very appropriate because a lot of people when they you know a lot of people when they think about anime they often they obviously kind of think about the eyes right you know, that's the first thing that a lot of people notice when they when they like watch anime at first. It's like, why are their why are their eyes so big? The answer, of course, is naturally because of Bambi. The the well, no, more specifically, the ans the answer is because Osama Te Osamu Te says, I don't, I have, I struggle to pronounce the man's name. Osamu Tezuka did it first because I think. A lot of his works were loosely based on the stylistic style of... Stylistic style? <laughs> um, he, he had a big influence from Bambi, which had the main character of Bambi have those huge doe eyes to kind of indicate the innocence, right? Okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna... I think I might be overthinking this. I think I'm definitely overthinking this. So I think I'm going to... Try and underthink it instead. This is my solution. <laughs> okay. Then over here. I feel like I should almost make it and make him like smile bigger, like almost like have the mouth kind of half open. Whoops, I've got a little corner there. Okay, mouth. Okay, mouth does have like full on fangs. Good to know, good to know. Yeah, I, I love that a lot of people that I that I'm buds with also have like huge fangs in their mouth i feel i feel like that's that's like it, it's like it's like when mole rats recognize each other by smell you know it's almost like that yeah i mean if you don't have if you don't have incisors and canines that can tear and that can rent fresh flesh from limb fresh from limb <laughs> flesh from limb then really what are you doing with your design honestly <laughs> Okay. Alright then. 
I think what also bothered me is that I actually made the eyes a little small. You know, I, th I think relative to the rest of the face, I made them a little small. There we go. Uh, something about these eyes is wonky. Okay, I'm gonna redraw the eyes here. Come on. It shouldn't be this hard to make cat slit eyes. And yet... <laughs> Wait a second, I know what I can do. There we go. And then it's all about the positioning. Much better. Okay. Let's see, okay, then it's gonna kind of come on down like this with the hair. Go. And then another kind of little strand over here. Perfect. Okay. Then from there, it's going to be a very kind of, like I said, just very spiky bangs. Cat boy time. Hey, bunny. Yeah, it's cat boy time. I really need to like, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can't do something, if I can't... Okay, there we go. Now I can see chat a little bit more easily. I, ha I had, the thing is, right, I, ha I have a two monitor, this rice bag has two monitors, right? So I have the monitor, monitor on the left and the monitor on... Blah. Monitor is such a difficult word to say. I think it's underrated that I say it as, as successfully, as often as I do. But yeah, I have the one on the left and the one on the right. And the way that I usually do it is that, and I have my camera here in the middle, so the way that I usually have it is that I look at my at CSV and whatever on the left one here, and I look at OBS and whatever on the right one here, and I have chat box like all the way over here. <laughs> so I have to so I I just moved it to around here, so I should be able to see it a little bit more easily. That's become a problem, you know. I, I've started having problems like seeing chat. I don't know, maybe it means I'm more relaxed though, like the fact that I'm not staring over, you know, I'm not glancing towards chat every now and every five seconds. Maybe it's a sign I've gained confidence, maybe it's a sign that I've uh, matured as a streamer. Okay, then over here. Yeah, I, I know Toast likes his thick eyebrows. They, they, to be fair to him, they do look very good. There we go. Okay, I think I know what's bothering me about the face. First of all, the mouth is not like in line with the re with the rest of the chin. I think that I think that's one of the biggest things is that nothing is in line with the rest of the chin. Nothing like something. A lot of this doesn't feel right with the rest of the chin. This one out, like that. Making this kind of more parallel. And likewise. Okay, some, something went wrong with the eyes again. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where we lost the thread, but we have certainly lost it. There we go. And then we've got the elf ear kind of over here. 
I respect Toast a lot for the fact that he decided not to not only have the kind of um, animal ears for the cat for the cat boy aspect, but on top of on not, of also like, I feel like there are when it comes to giving char human characters humanoid characters animal ears, there are three potential outcomes. One, they have hu they have animal ears, and you know they're they they're not supposed to actually have like anything on the side of their heads you know it's just like smooth you know there's nothing there that's terrifying to me then there's just having them have like the animal ears and also the human ears which creates interesting kind of morphological challenges double the hearing yeah double your hearing double your fun that yeah that way you can listen to double music the forbidden genre which you can only access by having four pairs of ears Unfortunately, you do get tired of double music twice as fast, so, you know. Yeah, apparently a lot of the hype dies away after your first time. You know, it's like, you're very excited, you know, you, you, get your, you get your second pair of ears from the local alchemist. You're very excited to go to your first double music concert. And you, you go there, you have a great time. But then, you know, you get your buddies to go there the next week. And all of you notice that it just does not feel nearly as good. So yeah, that, that, that is the treachery of images, but for people who experience double hearing. There probably is a real thing like double hearing, you know? Like, it's, pro it, it's probably not that somebody has four ears, but maybe it's like some kind of a condition or something. Double hearing. I remember there was one called, there's something called echolalia, which essentially means that you repeat a similar sound, phrase, or word over and over because of reasons you know there's no specific reason but you just do eco ecolocation huh ecolocation that's true i mean he has some pretty de decently big ears and you you know the, one, the ones on the top are kind of a a lot of people on the spe spectrum do it oh i see yeah you know uh, on the other hand i do i do talk about the double hearing but on the other hand, he does have like all this fluff up top on the on the on the cat ears, so that does mean that it is at least partially muted up there. So I think that makes it much more bearable for him. I, I imagine at least. Okay, there we go. And perfect. Vaporwave muted recordings. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why Toast always listens to Vaporwave. That's how he just hear, hears normal music. He's like, this is, man, this is, music is really good. And everybody's like, yeah, I like how it gets muted towards the beginning. And he's like, it gets muted? <laughs> Poor guy. I will say, though, Toast's taste in music is very good. I, I love my some Future Funk. Let's see. Yeah. You have to wonder, right? Earlier today, I saw a post about somebody, a game developer, I think, who said that essentially sound design is bullshit because he, because he was making this game where I think there was like an enemy type or something or like the player character could go utterly berserk. And he, and he, and he showed off this audio recording, uh, this kind of um, MP3 file of the power-up sound effect, and it was this shrill scream that was just absolutely terrifying. And he was like, and sound design is bullshit because I lifted it from this. And it showed one of those Hololive girls just yelling into her microphone during during what I assume was karaoke. <laughs> and it sounded al almost exactly the same. There were, there were basically zero changes to it. <laughs> I wonder to what, I wonder like the like if most future funk or you know whatever kind of hyper sampled sample heavy shall we say um, music genre what, if they have like a go to source or you know if they have like a ratio of ones that they record to them of like do they have like a quota to fill of ones they recorded themselves versus ones that they uh, took from movies or shows or old anime or something. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm, uh, I know. <laughs> One one day, every movie on Earth will have been seen at least 13,000 times because lo-fi producers keep running out of samples to take. Eventually, they're just going to start taking samples from friggin... I don't know. Morbius. I gotta, I gotta stop bringing up Morbius. The thing is, right? Now that's become my go-to bad movie reference. Like, Morbius was not that good. I watched it... I unfortunately did have the chance to watch it myself, and it's not that good. But... <laughs> you know, because I have that reference in my mind of like news of like movies that are particularly irrelevant. The thing is, everybody's beaten the Morbius dead horse joke, beaten the joke of Morbius as horse so much that it is not only dead, but it too has become vampiric and weird and weirdly CGI'd in. <laughs> S such as the uh, <laughs> such as the burden of one such as myself who does not watch way too many movies and the thing is right I think a lot of people have patience for bad movies I don't I don't have that I don't I know there are some people who say like oh yeah you're gonna love this movie it's so bad it's good I don't have that if a movie is bad it's just like bad to me <laughs> like there are aspects of it that I can enjoy but uh, but at the end of the day I'm gonna be like I'm not happy that I spend my time on this. <laughs> Me with Sharknado. Yeah, I remember watching Sharknado. I watched it with a buddy of mine, and I remember it being basically okay. I thought it'd be so bad it'd be funny. Mm. Yeah, instead it's just kind of... Like, the thing about Sharknado, right? I think what they were trying to go for is that they wanted to have a movie that was not only a meme, but also had a legitimate beating heart beneath it all. Then again, I was like very sleepy when we watched it, and also this was like, what, six years ago? And let me tell you, Pabs from six years ago has much worse taste than Pabs from six seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember Sharknado being particularly offensive to my taste, but I, then again, I don't have, I didn't have very good taste back then. You know, maybe I would look at it and look upon it more unkindly now. <laughs> I feel like Leov would have good commentary, but only if he's not bored with it. <laughs> I will say that the movie is aggressively heterosexual, but but in, at least in a kind of respectable way. Like I feel like if they if they were already kind of going for this meme -y thing, right? They should have at least tried to go full camp with it, but instead it's just kind of how do I put this? It feels like. It feels like one of those video games where, like, the protagonist is just another brown-haired white dude who has, like, a gruff voice and maybe a tragic backstory involving a dead woman. It feels a lot like that. I'm, I'm just saying they, they could have done a lot more with it. In retrospect. I haven't thought of Sharknado in, like, a long time, so thank you for unearthing that memory. <laughs> Okay, then with the, sh with the choker here. I think I've hit a, like, a record high of drawing characters with chokers this month, because between... Okay, let, let me do a quick head count for myself. I think... Okay, so the guy from, Mon from Tuesday definitely had a choker. I remember that much. Then... I think at least one other character I've drawn this year, this year for Artfight had one. I don't remember who, but I do remember that they had one. Then I also drew Rice Beast's human Sona, which is still a very weird thing. I, d I don't know why I like Rice Beast's human Sona so much. I think it's funny that, like, it just transforms into this extremely ha handsome creature or specimen and still just bites the fuck out of everything. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I need to flip this heart around because the perspective on it is making me angry. God. So today, right, um, I ended up having lunch with a co-worker of mine, and, you know, we, we decided to feel, we decided to go a little bit more adventurous than 
you know, the kind of 20 square meters around the building where we work at. So we decided to go to a nearby area that had a lot of food trucks in it. But the problem was it had some kind of tourist group also there at the time. And there was this fucking entertainer guy who... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to give him credit. This the bit that he did was actually pretty good. Was actually pretty good. So this guy, we were like, we were like walking along. We were trying to figure out where the hell we needed to go to get to the food court. And this guy, with the most thick Australian accent you have ever heard, this guy introduced himself as the world's only Australian. Half Chinese, half Chinese, half Australian, Jewish, enter world entertainer, and <laughs> there were. So I think it, no, he, I think he like he introduced himself as the, as the world's finest half Chinese, ha half Australian, Jewish um, entertainer. But the fact, but the thing is, he kind of tra trailed off a little bit when he said Australian, so it sounded like he just said the world's first Australian <laughs> and I, was, <laughs> I thought to myself that was actually pretty funny honestly if somebody introduces themselves as the world's first Australian they're doing something right God, it, it, I don't know why I knew so many Australian people in high school I guess it just turns out that way sometimes but like there are a lot of Australian kids in my high school Other bad movies I've watched. Hmm, I don't know actually. I thought Soil and Green was very was way too slow paced, but you know that's just how movies were made back in the day. Bad movies that I've watched. I don't know actually. I don't think I've watched all that many bad movies. I think, I think I, I've been saved to my I've saved myself a lot of grief because I either watch the thing is right. A movie could be objectively bad, but I could still enjoy it because I, there's something in there that I like. Like, for example, I know there's a movie out there called The Five Deadly Venoms, which is a kung fu movie that I know a lot of people wouldn't actually like too much, but I know for a fact that I loved a ton because it just had a lot of cool things. You know, it, it had a lot of cool martial arts stuff, it had a lot of interesting plot character stuff. I liked it, and, you know, I know that that's definitely not going to be everybody, but I know that I liked it, so... I think that it's a good movie. Yeah, this just in. Local rice bag discovers what, subject, what subjective opinions are. <laughs> yeah, I remember that I really liked a couple of movies when I was growing up. I really liked... Um, well, I say growing up. I liked a lot of movies as a kid. I watched a lot of like Disney movies. Underdog, I think, was one of the kind of trashier movies that I've watched that I really enjoyed. But then again, I was a child, so I think I'm exempt from the bad taste punishment that I've kind of concocted in my mind for this. Big shoulders, very big shoulders. Oh, can you only like move them like that? I see. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's a little closer to what the kind of muscle tone he's got going on here. Okay, then this is gonna kind of bend down. This is gonna kind of like uh, curve down like this. There we go. Yeah, I remember after I became a teenager, I. <clears throat> A majority of the movies that I ended up watching were from a website called TV Tropes that just essentially that what I do is that I'd find a the way that TV Tropes works is that essentially you have a it's supposed to be like a wiki for different kind of cliches and tropes that occur across different types of media. So essentially it kind of catalogs examples and 
instances of a certain kind of common motif across different things of media. So, for example, uh, you know how, like, in a lot of movies and such, there will be a kind of mystical object or object of really great plot importance that the heroes have to keep away from the bad guys or the bad guys are trying to keep away from the heroes because it, it's kind of like the whole thing that the the movie show what have you is is hinged on like for example uh, a, a suitcase full of money right so it doesn't necessarily have to be a suitcase it just has to be some object that a lot of people in the series want and they actually have a term for that they call it a MacGuffin <laughs> I don't know why they call it that, but that's what it's called in the kind of lingo that they use. But it's that kind of idea, right? Like they they see a thing that happens a lot of, across a lot of different media, and they try to kind of categorize it and figure out, hey, what are some more examples of this? What are some variations? What could you do with this to make it more interesting? That kind of thing. And they would essentially catalog all all the tropes that they could find in a movie, a film, a I, I said movie and film separately, like they're not the same thing, but you know, a, a series, uh, an anime, a manga, whatever, what have you, a video game as well. They do, they do video games also. And how do I put this? Like, I forgot where I was going with this actually. <laughs> oh, right. My, my taste in movies. Uh, you, like sometimes a page would have examples linking to a specific movie or something and I'd be like hey that sounds interesting from the plot synopsis they have I, I kind of want to watch that and then I did and that's how I discovered a couple of my favorite movies I one of my favorite movies ever is this movie called Snatch um, it's essentially about a boxing promoter who does under, underground bare knuckle boxing fights He's not exactly a great guy, but he's at least a very honest boxing promoter. And because of an incident with some, with a with this kind of um, he ha he essentially has an, an incident with a pretty much a master. Okay, so I think the way that it went is that he needed a new trailer home, and he went his, he made his kind of gopher go buy him one. And the, the guy messed up because he bought one that was like absolute garbage. And when he tried to, you know, pick a fight with the people who sold it to him, they essentially said, okay, why don't you fight us about it? And because this guy was going around with a fucking bare knuckle boxer, he was like, yeah, okay, but why not? <laughs> yeah, tell, tell you what, the, that scrawny looking guy that's played by Brad Pitt, why doesn't, he fight my, why doesn't he fight my buddy? And whoever wins, you know, kind of gets what they want. And it turns out that the guy, the scrawny guy played by Brad Pitt, is actually kind of a monster at boxing. <laughs> so then it kind of, kind of, it kind of unravels in all kinds of very interesting ways. It's actually considered a kind of spiritual successor to another movie, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, I believe it's called, which is also another movie that I really like. Yeah, th this one instead is about a couple of heists gone wrong. Inclu including essentially what was a card game that one of the players cheated at and this other dude all basically has to figure out a way to get this the guy that he lost to money but because there's so many much stuff going on he actually ends up not having to you know it gets it gets mo much more interesting than just guy with a big debt has to pay off said that and i think that's the kind of way that a lot of media gets very interesting you know, it's it's like they they started you off with this this kind of very basic concept, like okay, this guy's got a debt that he wants to pay off. That's a very strong character motivation for why we should be following his story. And then they kind of start mixing new and different things into it, and you're like, okay, this story that started out about about as about as a dude trying to kind of escape debt, it's kind of evolved into different things. I don't know, I think it's always interesting when it does that. It kind of plays with your expectations a little bit. Granted, past a certain point, though, it gets very tiring. Like, I think past a certain point... I'm gonna take some water here. Past a certain point, you're like... Okay, listen, I came here three hours ago to watch, to watch a movie about a dude in debt. Why are we talking about fucking unicorns and shit? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that.
Okay, there we go. I don't know how to replicate this kind of like metal logo. That's going to be a bit tough. Yeah, I've never drawn metal logos before. I think I have drawn one singular logo and no, I've drawn a lot of logos actually, but I've ha I've only like done one kind of uh, logo meant for like professional use. And that's actually my own logo, which I never use <laughs> because I just use my signature for everything. I'm telling you, that's going to come back and bite me in the ass one of these days. Yeah, it, it, my logo is... You can actually see it whenever I uh, do screen transitions, actually. Okay, whoop. Yeah, like that. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Yeah, hang on. I, I flashed it a couple times, but I'm going to try and put it up on screen pro proper. Let's see, where did you go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, this thing. I have it there for... Um, I, I made it exclusive exactly so that I would have something to show off during the stinger that the stinger transition that I have Which are surprisingly fun to make I meant mood, but but also I like your logo. Thank you <laughs> Thanks funny. Yeah, no, uh <laughs> That's actually really funny. Okay. Anyway <laughs> Yeah, I have a logo, but I don't use it for anything because I just use my signature No, I don't think I don't think this kind of like ab line here is so so well defined past this point here. Okay, I think I think what the best thing that I can do for myself is draw the shorts and then figure out the deal with the ab line. Okay, then okay, this is gonna kind of go like this. Okay, that works. Yeah, no, I, I think those are just like muscle abs. They're not they're not like chubby abs, I don't think. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are like muscle. Those are like supposed to be like pure muscle, not not like little chub chubby parts. Okay, then okay, no belt, which is Oh, hey, <laughs> there's a little jam here. Didn't notice that. Okay. Uh... Okay. Yeah. It's very funny to me that, like, Toast and Leo sunk out during the hours that I'm mostly active. So that, that, so that means I can draw stuff like this on stream without it spoiling the surprise. Basically, as much as I want. <laughs> God, it's it's a good day to be me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've never figured out how these like muscle these ab muscles are supposed to work, where they kind of like peter out, you know. I know you get them by doing like mad obliques, but even so, I, I'm not sure kind of like where they end. I don't know, maybe I can just go head over to a Planned Fitness or something for like three hours and, and eventually I'll figure out what, what exactly they do. Lord knows there's enough dudes in like in like those weird muscle shirts that like kind of trail down to around here to, for me to kind of investigate. Especially in this weather. I, I know that I live in a place that's like fairly temperate. You know, I'm very lucky in that regard. I, I haven't had to deal with like the huge, huge heat waves that, ever, that I hear everybody's kind of going through. And I'm very grateful for that. But at the same time, it's still hot here. Like, it's temperate because I live close to the ocean, but it's still hot. You know, it's not it's not like I'm living in like a nice chilly wonderland. Hmm, chilly wonderland. I feel like that's definitely like the specialty dish of at least one diner out there. Chilly wonderland. I don't know. It's worth. It's worth. I don't know. I've. I don't know how to cook chili. I've never cooked chili before. 
I know that you're supposed to cook it for like a long, long time though. I know that I know that much, but I've never actually made chili before. Uh, should I make the thighs thicker? Eh, no, nah, that's they're okay like this. I know you're supposed to like use tomato, chili. I mean, obviously chili peppers, lots of spices and all that. And I, I do understand that you're supposed to, like, cook it low and slow for a long time. You know, really let the flavors kind of marinate in there. Yeah. I wanted to learn to, how to kind of replicate that with my own kind of cooking at home. But the problem is that I think I might have used too much liquid. Because a lot of the things that I cook with are frozen or originally. Like, um, you know, frozen vegetables and all that and a lot of them have a lot of like high moisture content, it becomes rather difficult to, I don't know, um, kind of like cooking, like let it cook slowly, meaningfully. I think I'm just, I feel like I'm just like steaming it on inside the frying pan a lot of the time. That's something I've been meaning to correct about myself. You know, I, I say that I'm like decent at cooking, but there are still a lot of things that I want to learn about. You know, there are many things that I'm dissatisfied with that I would like to correct. If not incorrect, then at least kind of improve on. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna kind of flow on over like this. Perfect. Let's see, there we go. And does it have like a little pocket in here? No, but it does have the little jam. There we go, a little, a little tiny jam with little button eyes. ears sprout and the two and the two little arms here perfect there we go God, that reminds me though. <coughs> Earlier today, right? <laughs> Whenever I, I go to work in proper like business shirts, right? Nowadays you can these days you can wear like a polo to work and that's still acceptable. But I like going in like a proper shirt. It fe it feels good. It feels it feels proper, you know. It's a it's a kind of mindset thing almost, you know. If I go if I go to work properly dressed for the occasion, then I'll feel more competent at my job. However, today it was actually so hot out. I, I, I said earlier that I that we actually kind of adventured a little far with my with with, with like my uh, buddy when we were trying to get get us some food. And what ended up happening is that during at some point during this outing, I unbuttoned one of the buttons on my shirt. I, I, I wear my shirt buttoned down to like by one button. So essentially what that means is that I have I'm like one button away from being like buttoned up to the collar. If that makes sense. And it was hot enough that I actually unbuttoned another button. And I was like, okay, I'm going to unbutton it real quick. But then when we, get, when we get back to the office, I'll remember to button it. And I didn't remember to do that. <laughs> and for about two or so hours, until I went to the bathroom and I realized my mistake, for about two or so hours, I was just like... <laughs> I was just like chilling with one... With like my a second button open and the thing is right it's not even that scandalous it's not that scandalous to have like two buttons down that, that's almost like re that's almost like that's almost like the normal amount of buttons you'd expect to have down on a shirt 
But because I'm so used to having it like one button, I felt like so scandalized. <laughs> I'm like, my god, what will they think of me? <laughs> god. Yeah, like I said, it's not really that big of a deal, but but I had a, such a visceral reaction to it that it was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I was like some kind of dismayed Brit British gentleman that realized he'd been shown ankle all day. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I think I think like modesty is something that should be much more socially acceptable than it actually is. Because I feel like these days a lot of fashion involves showing off a lot of skin. But but you know, that's not really my thing. <clears throat> you know, I, I like wearing tank tops and I like but I don't like wearing shorts for example. I don't like I don't like showing off my legs too much. Not it's not even showing off my legs. I just don't like to not wear pants, if that makes sense. You know, I like pants. Pants are very comfy. Let's see, right here, thicken it up. Uh, connect vector line and simplify. Uh no. Maybe you redraw a line width. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I remember I I found out the other day that those like old timey bathing suits, you know, the ones that looked like the dude was wearing shorts and a shirt at the same time, were actually considered very scandalous. You know, guys weren't allowed to like take off their shirts at the beach at one time. You know, and so having this kind of a tank top uniform was at, like very scandalous at the time, <laughs> which is so funny. I know there's a brand these that like an actual modern brand that makes those kind of for plus size people as well. I think it's called like Beefcake somewhere or something. Let's see, okay, the shoes we got shoes that are about yay big. I see, okay. I might, okay, I might be doing these a little short. Okay, around here, maybe. Now that's a little too tall, actually. Okay, here we go. Happy meet. Okay. There we go. And a little kind of flap here. Yeah, I think this is something that I need to remember to do. I need to remember to add the little flap on the tongue of the shoe. Because other I think that I think that adds a lot to the design without even doing much. You know, low effort low effort, high payoff. That's the way I like to do things. Granted, I work damn hard at this, but you know, in general. <laughs> You know, more broadly speaking, low low effort, high payoff is how I live my life. That isn't like to say, you know, the thing is, right, I say that and it sounds a little bit lazy, but at the same time, there is this concept, right, the 2080 rule, which, it, which states that 80% of the results come from about 20% of the work. Now, this is more of a generalization than a rule of thumb, obviously. However, it does have some truth to it, because if you nail it in certain critical aspects, you're going to do much better than somebody who tried way too hard at, at some parts that weren't important and, you know, ended up kind of falling on their face because of it. It's about, strat it's about strategic thinking. You know, maybe I, don't, maybe I don't put so much effort into the shoes, but I put more effort into, like, the pose, the folds, everything else. That kind of thing. It's 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 like energy management. There we go. 
Okay, there we go. Wait, hang on, that's not right. Okay, there we go. Okay, that works for me. Okay, then we got... Okay, I think I see the kind of pattern here. Okay, this one here. And then this one over here. This one over here. Perfect. There we go. Mm, no, something about this doesn't feel right. I think it's because I think it's the lines. I think it's like it doesn't feel exactly parallel to the lines on the foot. I think that's why it feels off. There we go. Okay, and then... Hmm. Okay, shoelaces kind of come up around here. There we go. And this one too. Perfect. Okay, then the rest of the shoe kind of works like this. Shoes are a very interesting topic for me because I don't know much about them, but they're very important to a character design, despite the fact that we almost never look at a character's feet. I don't, I don't really pay attention to characters' footwear most of the time, but un unless it's like very elaborate, you know? So people who do pay attention to it are kind of, are very admirable to me. Let's see, there we go. Perfect. I'm gonna take another sip of water here. <clears throat> okay. Okay, these are supposed to be like little cuts and such on the on the like thigh highs. Come on. I believe in you, buddy. There we go. Okay, cool. Thankfully, I only had one shoe in frame, so like, <laughs> you know, that well, we take those. Well, I'll take I'll take that as a win. Other thigh high is going to kind of come in around here. No, I think if anything, it would kind of. 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about how this would kind of play out. And I think it's safer to put it underneath the line here to avoid a tangent than putting it over because otherwise it looks a little unnatural as well. Here. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, then the arms. I think I should finish. I should draw those before I move on to the little details. Okay. Oh yeah. Speaking, I I mentioned earlier there was a movie that I watched where a dude was trying to buy a mobile home. It turns out that those are actually becoming pretty popular. I know in California, apparently, they have new laws that make it more easy to live in one of those, especially, you know, kind of full time. And I know a lot of people see them as like camping units or, you know, recreational vehicles. And, you know, that's that's all well and good, but some people do use them as homes. I always I've always wanted to try living in one of those for at least a little while, but it seems very uncomfortable. Like that was kid Pablo. And I think they now they'd just be kind of uncomfortable. You know, it comes with the realization that you wouldn't have easy access to a bathroom with working water. I mean, unless you got a probably really fancy one, in which case you might. I don't know how they work. I don't know mobile homes too well. But apparently they're becoming more popular. And this has led to kind of an increase in what I want to call miniature appliances. Yeah, apparently like stuff like very tiny ovens, very tiny microwaves, very tiny coffee machines and all that are becoming much more popular because these mobile homes are becoming also more popular. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of like being able to live somewhere without being t tied down to one specific place. I think I think it's as close to a, as I, it's I think I think it's as close as home ownership as I can conceive of for the moment. <laughs> You know, you talk about home ownership, you can't like pack your house and take it with you, but if you live in one of those mobile homes, you can. Granted, there won't be much house to pack, but still, it's it it has to beat like not being able to take some of your stuff with you, right? There has to be some tangible benefit. Lower overhead as well, you know. Although I do wonder how they get like TV, working TVs in there because that would mean that you'd have to have an electrical generator of some kind. And I don't think that car batteries can power TVs for that long. Or, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure what kind of batteries those things are packing, but it must be quite powerful. Okay, then right here, just kind of suppress that. There we go. These wristbands remind me of John Cena. <laughs> you can't see me. My time is meow. Yeah, I don't know what happened to John Cena. I remember he was like a big meme in 2016, and now I just don't see him nowhere. I I know that he used to have that uh, idea of uh, what was it, Professor of Thugonomics. That's actually a pretty funny title. I, I wish I had a PhD in that instead of whatever the fuck I actually have, which is a bachelor's degree. There we go. Yeah, then, then I remember he leaned a lot into the fact that he was like an ex-marine and everything. I remember that that like, okay, I don't remember if the pipeline goes that the, it goes from football player becomes pro wrestler or pro wrestler becomes football player. I think it might easily go both ways because I remember The Rock had a career in, in what do you call, 
uh, professional football before he actually became a wrestler for a while. That's how, I think that's where he got the nickname The Rock. I don't know, maybe he had the nickname before he was a wrestler. Maybe it was from like the the football he played. But yeah, I know The Rock was a wrestler for a bit, and I think he came in there because he didn't want all the brain damage that came from, you know, being slide tackled by dudes who weigh like 300 pounds and are all muscle. Which, you know, understandable. I wouldn't want to get brain damage from those dudes either. Those dudes either. And I, th I, I think after that, he did become an he became an actor much more naturally because, you know, it makes sense that with the showmanship and everything you learn from pro wrestling, you'd be able to break out into acting. You know, presumably, assuming you're good at, make, at doing at cutting promos and all that, I could see that I could e easily see that becoming like a highlight reel for yourself. Okay, then over here. Are we done with the line art? I think we might be. Okay. Let's just look. Okay, cool. No, I'm not gonna put it a fold there. It's it that feels weird. Okay, then I'll add some uh, some holes to the to the thigh highs. Yeah, I don't remember the exact spread for these. Was it like just random? It feels that way. Okay, did he have any on his knees? Oh yeah, just just a couple of extra on his knees. I think that's fair. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. I started realizing recently that I need to learn how to draw better distressed clothing because otherwise it just ends up with like a bunch of lines like what I've got here. Yeah, it's something I want to improve at. extra here because of the uh, knee. There we go. This feels like somebody is smacking a creeper from Minecraft. I don't know why, but I could just picture that for a moment. Just a couple more here and there. Okay. That should do it. Okay, I think that's the line art pretty much done. We can move on to the uh prop to the uh coloring. Oh my arms. <laughs> I don't know why my my shoulders are so tired. I don't remember doing any shoulder exercises, so what gives? I don't know, maybe, maybe I was, like, doing <laughs> sleep shoulder exercises. Yeah, I was doing, I was doing snatches in my, w in my sleep. I don't know, I've heard them be called, like, sweeps, snatches, a couple different things. But the idea is that you essentially take a... You know... You kind of start out with this pose right here. All right, you have the you have the dumbbell or whatever right here. You're kind of, you're kind of like bent over. You know you have. Oh, are you bent over? No, actually no, no no. Hang on hang on hang on. I'm picturing this all wrong. <clears throat> so 
Okay, you, you do start with it kind of low, I remember. But you are holding the kettlebell. Or the dumbbell, or whatever. Uh, or what have you. And then you're supposed to use your hips, your hip power to you, and then your shoulders to kind of lift it above your head. And that's why it's called like a snatch, because you're supposed to like snatch it from the ground. At least I imagine that's what they're called. Okay. Then from there. What is this? I'm not sure what this part here is supposed to be. Is it like maybe some hair accessory? I do not know. Oh, I forgot to draw the, the glasses here. Hang on. Of rim does the do the goggle glasses have? Just a straight one? Okay. Funky sunglasses are such an underrated part of character design. You give your character some funky just fed Lily dinner, she gets so excited she starts licking her lips as soon as she sees the can of wet food. God, that is very relatable. Yeah, I, I just I, I just think about what I'm gonna eat for dinner and then I just like like go like Mm. <laughs> Listen, you only get you only get to eat so many times in your life. You need to be able to enjoy every single one, right? Okay, there we go. Actually, I'm gonna keep that little bolt there. Oh, that's really cute, though. I like Lily. Cute dog. Okay, then over here. Okay, and I feel like I was forgetting something else. Right, the earrings. I realize now these aren't like straight like hoop earrings. These are supposed to be like spikes. Stud spikes. Spike studs. I don't know. Spike studs? Spike studs seems like that's what they would be called. Come to think of it, I think I forgot to buy popcorn today. I'm not watching a movie or anything, I just like to have it around the house, you know. If, if you need a little light snack or something, popcorn is just the right amount of filling but not filling to, you know, be able to snack on but not exactly ruin your appetite. I forgot the shirt straps, that's what I was forgetting, I forgot the, I forgot the little bondage shirt straps. God damn it. <laughs> At least I- the tail! <laughs> Fuck! God damn it, what is it with me and forgetting tails? <laughs> Every single time, without failure, I'm like, okay, yeah, this lineup looks good to go. And then I just remember, oh, right, the tail. <laughs> I don't even remember, like, I don't even remember at the end of the line art stage. Sometimes it takes me until I'm well into the painting stage to remember, oh, fuck, this character has a tail. I'm getting better at it, though. I'm starting to realize a little sooner, you know? It's good that I realize it now during the line art stage than to... Uh, Fucking kick myself for getting the poor cat boy's tail right at the end right at the end of the finish line. The furtive tail so easily forgotten. Okay, there we go. Yeah, no, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself that because I'm learning to, I'm being quicker, a little quicker on the draw when I remember these things. You know, I'm, I, I, I don't always remember right away. You know, I don't, I, but at least I remember eventually, which you know, better late than never. That is a very common saying. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then this is gonna have the two hoops right around here. Two hoop system. That's a very pleasing circle that I just drew. I'm very proud of that one. Let's see. Okay, then over here. Not 
shrink that down a little. And vice versa. There we go. Man, I can't... I think... I, I don't know what, what game I'm going to play after Valhalla. I, I kind of want to play that uh, Neon White game because I, I, hear, I hear a lot of people say good stuff about it and it seems like it's the kind of thing that would be right up my alley. Not because I'm particularly good at those kinds of video games, that's those those ones that are like very high pace or anything, but because I feel like the characters are just, are exactly the kind of do doofuses that I enjoy having on my screen. Okay, no, it needs to have a slightly wider radius. So I'm gonna make the profile on this a little bit higher. There we go. Okay. Whoa. What just happened? Oh, I see. I accidentally hit the V key, which which put or the control V key. I don't know what I don't know what key I hit actually. I don't know what turned on that blue mode. Oh well, whatever it is, it can't get me now. What is that? What, the, oh, no, no, okay. Uh, oh, you can actually see a, a bit of belly line here, okay. Ah, but it'd be obscured by the friggin... By the folds here, damn it. No belly line today, unfortunately. Belly line cancelled. Okay, then over here... Okay, that, this will kind of bend around like this. No, wait, it will... Hmm. Okay, I think what I need to do is I need to stop worrying so much about, like, the rings being even. Okay, there we go. We're gonna, okay, so er, a, a very, like very, very, sh not too long ago at all, like literally today, I think, the gr gr the band Gorillaz released a new song, and I got I, it took me like a hot minute to recognize Noodle after after like the amount uh, the amount like she's changed over the years. I was like, oh, hey, there's some there's some lady back, back there in the background. And then it took me a hot minute to realize, wait a second, that's Noodle. <laughs> yeah, I know way more about the gorillas, lore, about the lore of the band Gorillas, the British band Gorillas, play, who have no re relation to the real world man, Damon Albarn. <laughs> I know a lot about the lore of the gorillas, but... You know, I, it still hits me every single time. Like I, I see their 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 designs change. Like, oh shit, that's Noodle. Oh shit, that's um. I forgot. I forgot the big guy's name. I remember Murdoch and Two D because Murdoch is a complete asshole and Two D is literally named Two D. Not exactly very difficult to remember, you know. Let's see. I'll get into this one here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then... It's at times like this where, when I wish I worked with like even thinner lines or actually no, I don't work with very thin lines at all. I wish I worked with thinner lines at times like this because then I could figure out some of the details a little better. But you know, I, I like my thick lines. I like, I like thick lines. They have a very comic book feel to them, which I can't get enough of. Ok, 
Okay, there we go. Hmm, no kind of like dangly straps on the bondage thing? Okay. I call it a bondage thing. It's probably got like a proper name. A harness, I guess it would be called, but like... That's the easiest way for me to remember. My apologies for that, by the way. <laughs> Wait, okay, yeah, yeah, this makes more sense. I was gonna say, these two don't look alike. And it's because I kind of uh, goofed on the way that it actually acts in the real world. There we go. But yeah, I, I'm gonna try to play Neon White one of these days. You know, assuming I don't immediately start playing Resident Evil 4, because that's been on my list for a while now, too. Okay, and then I'm going to do a small little thing here. Because it seems like this is where the rings kind of uh, connect here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I hear an alarm, an alarm going off and I'm praying it's not one of mine. It's like the beeping of a fire alarm. Yeah, mainly because I don't want to have to get rushed out the building again in the middle of the stream. That's going to be very embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, sorry, gang. I have to cancel stream real quick. Uh, my fire alarm seems to have gone off, and I can hear the and I can hear the whole kind of building being evacuated. I'll be back in like thirty minutes. Bye. What a mess that would be. No, no, no. That's not actually happening, by the way. That's just an imaginary scenario. It's... it's. I, I don't think my alarm is actually going off. I think I would hear it if I did. If it was, I mean. Okay, there we go. Although that, I, that does remind me of one time I had to... I got locked out of my apartment. God, this is actually before I started live streaming. I forgot that this happened. Um, I got... I, I didn't get locked out of my apartment so much I, as I essentially... Okay, so... Little preamble to this. My apartment building actually has a indoor gym. It's not it's nothing too fancy, you know. It's it's some free weights, it's a little bench press. You know, it, it's got it's got a couple of treadmills in there. It's it's nothing too fancy, but it's what you need. It's 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 every it's got everything you need. You know, it's got a good variety of equipment. It has a rowing machine too, which I used to use a lot, but I didn't really see any gains from it, so I didn't I didn't really use it anymore. I think I, I, one time I rode for like 45 minutes. That was insane. Anyway, um, I was saying something. Right, the time I got, I got kicked out of gym because I was, uh, <laughs> the fire alarm went off. So in the middle of my gym, in, of like this time that I was spending in the gym during the, the summertime, um, I, I was just using some free weights and then I hear the fire alarm go off. So I kind I got, I kind of go like, um... I guess I should leave? <laughs> so, you know, I don't really have time to go back to my apartment and grab anything. I, I just, like, get out. I get out of the building. I go down the stairwell. The nine stairs that there fucking are in this apartment built. The nine, stair the nine stairs that it takes to get down from the floor where the gym is to the to the bottom floor. It takes me not nine staircases. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, okay, that was a nice little cooldown. I hope the fire, the fire bombers are kind of a you know, they, they hurry up with it. Um, they did not. <laughs> I was out there for two and a half hours, kind of like gross and sweaty, waiting for waiting for the the fire department to leave the apartment building so I could get back inside. I remember specifically what happened. I, I, I remember specifically being very grateful I actually had my uh, phone hooked up to my credit card because that way at least I could pay for like some cold drinks to while away the time. But yeah, that was a night that was nightmarish. I hated that whole situation. <sighs> okay, um Okay, those are, that's the kind of harness they're done, I think. Looks a little awkward though. It looks very clunky. 
I need to simplify some of these lines. Hmm, never mind. <laughs> Maybe simplify them a little less. There we go. I, I think what, what it feels, it feels like weird. It feels, it, it's something about the, it doesn't feel very organic. You know, metal is technically not organic, but there is an organic way for metal to be, you know? It, does, it feels like it breaks the flow of the composition a little bit, I, I think is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't feel good to, to see, like, in contrast. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then... Oh, right, he, he's got, like, nails, right? I need to remember those. Oh, that's what these are! The, these are the nail patterns. I see, I see. Okay. Well, that was a hell of a mystery that wasn't really a mystery and didn't really need solving, but damn it, it didn't just get solved, so nice work. There we go. It really is quite satisfying when you figure something like that out, though. You know, I made, I made a little goof about it just now, but it is satisfying when you finally realize, like, what something is. I remember when I was like first making this model, I, I think I've brought up before on stream how I figured out how to do live 2D mo break up live 2D models a little better. I made my model by essentially... Okay, so with VTube Studio, <clears throat> I use a program called VTube Studio to track my face movement so that it translates to the screen. It works pretty well, you know, I, I have my, uh, I can do a charming little smile, whatever. Um, so that's VTube Studio. Now, VTube Studio, you ha you have to kind of have all the files for a model, you know, export files, whatever, what have you, in the the program files itself in order for it to spit out a model, which makes sense, right? You can't you can't like you can't tell somebody, hey, draw a horse, if they neither know what a horse looks like and they have no reference for what it's supposed to look like. Okay, big old tail. Okay, kind of like that. Which, yeah, so that, so VTube Studio needs a file to kind of start running the programs on the on the screen, I'll start start kind of animating the models to, to track them to your face movements. Now, this is where I come in because. That also means that because that all the preset models that VTube Studio comes with have all their files and everything inside of inside the, the data resources folder already. So what I did is that I actually borrowed a couple of models. I looked at their texture atlases. So okay, so when you make a live 2D model, it's how do I put this? You have two components to a moving part. You have a mesh, an art mesh, and you have the texture. So for example, for my little rice up top here, I have a, you know, this is two things. This is one, a, a shape in Live2D, which Live2D has determined is rice. And it also has a texture, which is the kind of, you know, the way it actually looks. Which, it, which Live2D has a designated as the rice texture. Now, in order, in order for a Live2D model to export, it needs to have both the meshes and the atlas export. Otherwise, you're going to have like just either a block of meshes or, you know, nothing because there's just no, no atlas to map the textures to. So you know, it's a it's a little bit of a song and dance, but it's how it's just how it works. You know, I, I know that 3D models work on a similar principle, in that they have like a specific texture, but they they are all kind of like mapped to a singular mesh. Moving on. So when you export a model, the texture atlas is what the kind of model's components actually look like. So that's what I studied. I studied the pre-existing models kind of texture atlases to get an idea for hey. 
How, how did they break up the mouth? How did they break up the eyes? Uh, why do they split it like this? You know, it's kind of like a little slew thing to figure out how it exactly it's supposed to work. This tail needs to be a little bit higher. But yeah, that, that's how, how I essentially brute force learning a, learned a how, how to cut up live 2D models. I could have just watched a YouTube video, but those are a very hit and miss for me. Yeah, the thing is, right, I love learning, but I have to be taught in a very specific way. I, I need to be able to learn at my own pace to be very to be at my most comfortable with it. Otherwise, I get very pissy because it's not going fast enough, or I get very frustrated because it's not going slow enough. It's a whole mess. So, I, I like to just kind of learn stuff on my own, on my own, kind of like that. You know, that's that's why I love learning through books and written stuff because that way I can go back and reference whatever I need. I can take my own time. I can, you know, I can I can do what I like when when it comes to my learning, when it comes to books. And that's also why I don't really I'm not super I'm not really super jazzed about like videos and such as a as a means of learning. I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of how I operate. I like to be able to take notes very slowly and methodically. Okay, there we go. Okay. And connect vector lines. Simplify vector line. Maybe I can simplify it a little more so that it grows better. And no. Or maybe I just haven't simplified it enough. Hang on. This is... <laughs> I feel like you could use this... This... This tail to kind of shape a, a hex nut. I feel like you could use this, this t like the way that the tail currently is. It reminds me a lot of like those tools that you would use to like unscrew hexagonal screws. We got it though. We got we got it. Eventually, we figured it out. Yeah, I, I think at this point I need, I just need to make it go off screen and then back in. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, and are we missing anything else? Uh, I think my, mainly the logo on the on the T-shirt, but that one we can worry about later. Mm. Yeah, I think we got everything. Okay, now we may move on to the coloring stage. I'm gonna take a quick second to get up, do some stretches. Okay. I make so many old man noises. I'm 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 like in my early twenties, and I make so many old man noises already. So I dread to figure out the kind of ungodly sounds I will make when I'm older. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna sound like a deep sea whale, just like bellowing. <laughs> you know, crows will start flying from the trees. Pigeons will get scared. Dogs will like start getting really frustrated. Like it'll be somehow at a pitch too low for humans to hear, but also high enough that like only dogs can hear it. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Just you wait. Speaking of dogs, I learned that uh, I learned today that there was this dumbass. <laughs> all right, first of all. I don't, I, I'm not trying to like, I'm not going to rag on this guy too much, but at the same time, it's very hard not to. I learned that apparently there was this one dude who had 8,000 Bitcoin in a hard drive. You know, he had, he had, I don't know, I don't know if that's how it works, but he had 8,000 Bitcoins in a hard drive. And he accidentally threw that hard drive away. <laughs> so now it's in a landfill. He knows where it is. He, he knows that it's in this one specific landfill, but he doesn't have any means to get it. 
So now he's going to buy two $75,000 robotic dogs to kind of fish it out of the friggin' landfill for him. And at this point, I feel like he could just get a new setup to mine Bitcoin with the money that he's spending on these robot dogs. <laughs> like, why even the robot dogs, dude? Like, I don't understand why the robot dogs are necessary. I mean, yeah, he could try using like a... Like a... Like a... What do you call it? One of those like metal detectors, I think. It would take a while, but it would cost way less than two fucking robot dogs. And why two, specifically? <laughs> I don't understand why he needed two of them. <laughs> Maybe for efficiency's sake? What, like, is one a spotter and is the other a the hunter? What, 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 what is the logic behind this? Yeah. In other news about crypto dying, though, apparently Tesla lost... <laughs> okay, so... Quick, quick little accounting lesson here. I'm, I'm about to flex my accounting muscles. Um, in accounting, for, for most systems, right? In accounting, you are, broadly speaking, supposed to maintain... Okay, so the most popular method of accounting, is, and the one that's publicly accepted for larger companies, is this method called the double bookkeeping system of accounting. Now, this means that two, the, the accounting has, like, you have either one of two entries. No, I mean, okay, how do I put this? Um, the double entry system means that whenever you kind of file the movement of money in your company, uh, in, your, in your business, what have you, in your organization. Yeah, I think organization is a broad enough term. Whenever you file the movement of money in your organization, you need to have two entries. You need to have a debit and a credit. So to give you an example, right? Let's say I bought a small Klondike bar. So that would be DR, that would be debit, Klondike bar. Uh, let's say $3. But that's just a debit. I don't. I would need a corresponding credit entry to finalize the payment. So immediately afterwards, you would put in credit, uh, cash, for example. I paid for it with cash, and that would be also three dollars. So the idea is that the debits and credits always balance out to zero. They must always become zero at the end. Otherwise, you have messed up. It's a very interesting thing, you know. If you if you ever learn if you ever learn how to do accounting, it actually becomes very elegant as time goes on. But initially, it's just a complete clusterfuck. But to kind of reorient this conversation to my original point, um, to the kind of, I told you that story so I can tell you a story that I need to tell you so I can tell you another story. Okay, so another concept in accounting is impairment. Now, impairment occurs when you hold assets at... at okay, so for example, the Klondike bar was, would be an asset, right? That's something that... That's like a tangible benefit that I can use in the future, perhaps almost immediately in the future when I eat it. So that that's what, that's what an asset is in accounting terminology. It's just some future benefit that you can gain. Now... If you, the general rule of thumb is that you are supposed to hold assets at the lower of their original cost or their current market value. So, you, so for example, you know, specifically investments. This is how you're supposed to handle investments, is that you need to hold them at either cost, at the lower of cost, or original market value. So what ends up happening is that, for example, like, so to give you an idea, uh, if I bought like a bar of gold and I bought it for $100 and the market price for gold went up to 120 I would not change the bar of gold to be worth $120. I would keep it at $100. However, if the price of the gold became $80 in the market, I would have to write down an impairment which means that the bar of gold is no longer worth $100, it is now worth $80. Now you can recover impairment. You could, like if, you, if the gold bar goes back up to $100 for, for a gold bar, then you can kind of return, you can uh, undo some of that impairment. You can 
you can like uh, re you can reimburse it essentially but that is very limited in kind of application it's it doesn't happen very often you know it's very it's very rare that you actually get to do anything with your impairment you just you usually you just kind of have to take the L and hold it so that's so that's the third the second story that I need to tell you to, to tell you what happens um Tesla has a bit has a Bitcoin investment asset and it fell by 170 million dollars this year. It generated only like 64 million by the way. <laughs> so that that kind of massively sucks as an investment and it's very funny. I love it when cryptocurrency investments shit, shit the bed because honestly at this point I'm I'm tired of pretending to have like to to be like of two minds about it you know I, I, the, I, I have i have these two saying like but no crypto could be good for the no no crypto is just shit now honestly it's just shit maybe it wasn't at some point but now it is you know with all the environmental stuff and everything not to mention the thing is right it's not just the environmental aspect of crypto right it's not just the fact that currently crypto farms are using as much mon are using as much energy as Argentina you know that that's one thing you know that is one thing against it but at the, th at the same time nowadays every single cryptocurrency is a scam maybe it's been that way from the start even but nowadays if somebody's trying to get you into a cryptocurrency you are if you go for it you are definitely falling for a scam and if you're not the one falling for the scam you're the one trying to scam people which is, so yeah, that's why I have very little sympathy for Crypto Fiends. But yeah, sucks to suck, but you lost $170 million because your magic coins and your magic beans didn't grow into a giant plant. Okay. Okay, this one is going to have this part here. Perfect. Okay, this color here for the pants. Okay, did I get everything? Yep, okay. And this part too. One game that I've been wanting to try and play is either House Flipping Simulator or Power Wash Simulator. I feel like I'd be like very good at those games. Not in terms of like being... I don't think you can be bad at those games. I think they're the kind of thing where you just like... Go in there, do what do what the game asks you to, and then chill out for a while while you do that. It's it's meant to be a relaxing experience, so I don't think you can be bad at those games. But God willing, I will find a way. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I'm a good gamer. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a bad gamer. <laughs> ah, who am I kidding? I'm not that good at video games, but at least I have fun with them, and that's really what's and that's really all that matters. Okay, uh, but yeah, I, f I feel like I'd be good at those games because I love to hear, I, I just love to ramble on. So I feel like that that fits with the vibe of the game very well. Okay, then the choker and the pants are kind of the same color, right? Yeah, yeah, basically the same color. Cool. Okay. And that's also true for the for the bondage thing. Yeah. Okay. Harness. Why do I keep forgetting to call it a harness? It shouldn't be that hard. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. And then for the Joker as well. Oh, and the thigh highs. Can't forget those. Okay, and there we go. Okay, the shoes might be a little bit more difficult. But who knows, maybe it'll be easy. There we 
we go. Okay, and this kind of extends to around the whole kind of rim there. Okay, I got that. And this color here for the kind of like block part here. This kind of darker black for the soul here. And for this part too, I think. The pink part here. Uh, I I drew these like they're supposed to be like thick soled high tops, but they're really quite thin running shoes, aren't they? Oops. Yeah. Wearing running shoes everywhere feels great, but when you actually look at yourself in running shoes, it always feels rather lame. You know, it doesn't have like a bit, like it's not like wearing basketball shoes where it can pretty much be fashionable because they are technically high tops. You know, it's 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 like a very complicated kind of feeling. You know, it's um, you feel comfortable, but at the same time you recognize that it looks like you're get, kind of getting ready for a jog, and that makes you look a little bit like a dork. That that's kind of that's kind of my feeling towards it. I used to love wearing running shoes everywhere, but now I, I wear like more generic, just normal shoes. I have a pair of like of very beat up leather shoes that are that are apparently a pair of Altos. I bought them from a thrift store. Very happy with them. Very comfy. Very I put this like very secure feeling. The sole is kind of falling apart a little bit. I, I've been meaning to get that repaired, but you know it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Not to mention, I wouldn't even know where to go to repair a shoe in the first place. I don't think cobbler is that popular of a profession these days, to be quite honest. Okay, there we go. Little thing here. Okay, and then I like this. It's gonna kind of have the little dangly chains for here. I found that Cuban chains are the easiest to draw. But honestly, uh, uh, Cuban chains look very much like somebody just drew arrows kind of overlapping on each other and that and called it a chain. Which is good for me as an artist, but it doesn't look very good. It's not very visually distinct, you know? And I don't know why, but I don't like using those, like, uh, pattern tools to make the chains. I don't know why. I think I think it's because they're just they just feel very unwieldy to me, you know? I don't- I am very- I'm very used to the drawing everything kind of exactly as I f see fit. So the fact that I have to rely on that kind of pre-made pattern always chafes a little bit. Of course, this is also coming from the guy who hasn't drawn a background in, like, at least two weeks, so... You know, take that as you will. Perhaps heavily salted. Okay, this has, and this has at least two chains, so I'm going to make a copy of this first one. Expand it a little bit, and then kind of like that. Perfect. There we go. And then we just kind of uh, give it a little trim down here so that it doesn't overlap with the pants. I'm, I seem to have missed a spot right here. I wonder. I wonder what that was. Okay, but there we go. Okay, then yeah, this nice bright yellow color is kind of universal across the different metal accessories, so that's useful.
Oh, I forgot a vital part of this. There we go. Darken my doorstep no longer. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Here, this part here. Would be easier to use the brush. Nah. Fill tool it is. Yeah, I got a long weekend this week, and to be perfectly honest, I really needed it. I've been pooped. Yeah, I could really use a, t a quick break, but unfortunately I've got some other stuff to take care of during the weekend, but you know, I think a couple of nights of proper rest will do me some good. I think that's going to be very beneficial to, to my health. You know, a couple of nights where I can just like sleep a lot. I've been getting better at by my bedtime again. I've been I've been kind of getting back on the quote unquote wagon for for getting to bed at a reasonable hour. I'm very proud of myself for that. It took a gargantuan effort. And quite frankly, I'm not sure if it was worth it because I still end up tired when I wake up. But the fact is that I made an effort and that's what matters. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with... Oh, I'm very happy whenever I... You get a... How do I put this? Getting your sleep schedule on track is kind of like... It's kind of like buying a planner. It's the buying a planner of, you know, kind of fixing your lifestyle. It's like the kind of fundamental building block that you base the rest of the thing around, you know? It's like, okay, I'm going to get a rough, enough rest now. I'm going to get enough rest now. I'm going to be able to do everything I wanted because I'm getting enough rest now. And then, you know, halfway through, you realize, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually getting as much rest as I wanted. This sucks. And you kind of give up for a little while. But you know, you, you never know. You might pick it up. You might pick it back up again at random. It's always going to be there for you. I mean, not planners though. I feel like planners are kind of limited by the fact that they're. Oh, this is the wrong layer. Oops. Okay, how much did we lose? Not too much, thankfully. Okay, we we can we can handle that much. Here, this part here. It chafes to that I have to like re redo the mouth though. Thankfully, that shouldn't be too hard. I kind of figured it out very quickly. Okay, there we go. Did I use a different pink for the tongue? I think I did. Uh, what about this kind of pinky right here? Oh, that seems good. That I like that. Then, okay, gold for the eyeglasses here. Perfect. Okay. Bring back the model reference. Okay, at this point I can make the tiny jam doll here. The other day I had a dream that there was like a Lego minifigure of me coming out. Like, like a marketable Pabs Lego set. And I don't know why, but I was viscerally horrified at it. <laughs> Hang on, I, I, I remember exactly what it looked like, too. It looked like... It looked like... Okay, so it looked a little like this. Like, you know how LEGO minifigures have, like, the head like this? Right? I, I imagine that my head was, like, kind of covering that whole thing, like, some kind of, like, weird cape. Yeah, basically, basically like this. 
And I don't know why, but I really didn't like it being in my dream. To be honest, it's it, it, like getting a Lego figure of you made is like a life goal. I think if I get a if I ever get a Lego figure of myself in either in either of my rice form or in any other form whatsoever, I, I'm gonna count that as a massive win. <laughs> I'm going to be riding that high for the rest of my life. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuloni. <laughs> uh, sorry, boss. All I got are, all I got are the nuclear codes. Let's see. Okay, I think this kind of white here for the stitching on the eyes is good. No, don't turn me into a marketable Lego minifigure. No, this is fine actually. I'm 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 okay being a marketable Lego minifigure. Okay, there we go. Ah, I did it again. What? Did, okay, how much did we lose? Okay, not much. Just a, just a little paw here. Good. Okay, and are, is there... Okay, the eyes. I forgot the eye. It's this very nice kind of shade of green. There we go. Alright, look at that. It's the whole Catboy enchilada. Okay. Let me do some color stuff to it a little bit. Do I like that? I don't know if I do. RGB Catboy. Oh, actually, these these pinks are very nice. Okay, yeah, just kind of boost the saturation a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. It's already very bright. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to keep that as a layer reference, but I'm, I am gonna like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of try and make it like the normal colors right now. Yeah, Catboy on un Catboy unedited. Okay. Not to mention, I still need to make the Death Metal logo shirt thing. Okay, kind of bring this around. Whoop! He nearly jumped out of his skin. <laughs> Okay, you can see there the the other layer, the the parts that I accidentally painted on top of the other layer. <laughs> Good grief! Yeah. Oh yeah. Did I learn that the USPS has a postcast podcast postcast? <laughs> yeah, they have a postcast. No, the the US Postal Service has a po has a podcast. It's called Mail in It. <laughs> What are they? I don't know what they talk about. I imagine it's just like a normal talk show, but run by the USPS. That is such a strange concept, though. I don't know how I, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, on the one hand, I guess it's fine, but on the other hand, it's just very strange to me. Okay, hang on. Okay, I know exactly how to do this. All right, we get, we get ourselves the calligraphy pen. Really resize it. Okay, we might not even have to do it here. Okay, hang on. Uh, hang on. I need to do this on a separate layer. That's the only way this is going to work. Okay, so. Okay. No, no. It's not not with a calligraphy brush. This is a mistake on my part. Maybe the realistic G pen, though. Or maybe the mapping pen. I don't know what the mapping pen is supposed to be. Seems to be good. Very interesting kind of... What is this? Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, though. Um, well, yeah, let's go. Let's just go with the mapping pen. Why not?
Maybe there's like a tutorial for how to do this on YouTube because I, I feel like this is very mid. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I got no idea how to make death metal logos. I got, I've got to Google this. Hang on. <laughs> Maybe there's a font for it. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a death metal logo. Design this based on hand lettering practices. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Make a custom metal logo type? Eh, I ain't got that. Um. Okay, I think I've. I, okay, I think. I'm not sure I've got a. I I don't. I'm not sure if I'm understanding correctly, but I've got an idea for how to do it, so I'm gonna try that out. Okay. So all right, get rid of this. All right, so. And let's use the G pen for now. Okay, so okay, well, well, we best also do this on a vector layer. I feel like that'll be even more comfortable. Okay, so okay, we got it. Okay, so we got this like this. Okay, so okay. Okay, we have achieved a singular T. This is this is this is a ground shattering process, folks. At this point, I might I might I might construct an entire sentence in as many as three to four business months. Okay, so then it's gonna have this kind of like O here. Okay, gonna join this part here lines simplify control point there we go okay gonna keep it like that oh okay so T is in the middle here. This A is throwing me off a little bit. It reminds me a little... Okay, so this A... Okay. I think I know how to do this, so... Okay, so this A is going to be like this. There we go. I, it reminds me a little bit of cursive, almost like the way this S is done. I mean, hang on. Okay, like that. Okay, that's the A. All right, and I might lower the opacity of the reference layer so I don't have to strain my eyes so much. Yeah, not to mention I can see the letters a little better. And then the and yeah, it is a little bit like cursive because if you write A as in cursive, it'd be like this. Okay. There we go, kind of like that. Okay, and then there's a T in the middle here. I might be running out of space here. <laughs> okay. And... Okay. 
There's something that's wigging me out about this S. I don't know why. Okay, bring this all kind of towards here. There's this E, which is kind of like this. There we go. But yeah, honestly, earlier one of my uh, seniors at work, he he uh, he he was uh, listening to this podcast when, when I met him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, sorry, I was listening to a podcast," and I asked him which one, and he I think he would call it was called like Absolute Mapping or something like that. It's some kind of video game podcast, and he was like, "Are are you like into video game anime podcasts?" And I and I had to very carefully restrain my power level. <laughs> <laughs> like, does anybody? Do you guys ever have situations where like somebody asks you, "Hey, do you like this thing?" and you kind of have to like flex muscles that you didn't know you had to be like, "Yeah, I like it a normal and reasonable amount." <laughs> I'm aware of it. I heard of it. Anime, I've heard of it. <laughs> I had to do that today. <laughs> Sincerely, I had to. I had felt like I had to, like, I was like, immediately, like, like, and then I was like, wait, no, remember, this is your work zone. <laughs> and I had to be like, yeah, I've, I, I've heard of them a little bit. I'm interested. I had, to, I had to play it cool and everything. On the bright side, now I have like five new podcasts to listen to, so that's nice. Yeah. Good podcasts are hard to find. I think that I think because it is just that we all have like a certain level of, you know, we all we all vibe with a certain kind of thing. We all have like this kind of idea of what do we find entertaining. So it's very difficult to find good podcasts. For me, uh, for me, I usually need to be at least somewhat engaged with the story. I remember that I had listened to this one D&D podcast a lot, a lot, Dice Funk. I used to listen to that a lot. But over time, I, it started to become harder and harder for me to kind of follow the stories that they were coming up with. So eventually, I just stopped listening. I remember I actually had to force myself to, li to listen through the adventure zone, not because I wasn't, like, particularly... Not because I didn't like it. I liked it just fine, but it just didn't hold my attention too well. But you know, everybody kept saying about talking about how great it was, and it was pretty good. Like it had some fantastic narrative payoff. But at the same time, it's like, eh, you know, not. I'm okay. I would have I would have lived a perfectly fulfilled life not listening to it, you know? Anyway, I have to download those. I, I need to I need something to listen to during work. I've I've learned that if I listen to too much music while I'm working, eventually I just get like upset. <laughs> Like it comes, it comes to a point where like I'm just like mad at the sounds coming out of my headphones. You know, you oversaturate like your listening. You know, you, you oversaturate your senses, and eventually it just kind of makes you pissy. Okay, and then we got another one of these funky little O's. I feel like I need to like squash this down almost. Right now it looks a little bit like a skateboard logo, which is fine, but it's not what we're looking for. Okay, and then we can have... Although, what if I just... Oh, hang on. I, maybe I can reflect this and then... Yeah, yeah, okay. And then over here. Perfect. Okay. We're gonna take this. We're gonna take this whole thing. And we're gonna figure out how to make it more kind of metal. You know, we've got the kind of type typing kind of down. I think a lot of it is like... Okay, so like... There's like drippy parts of it. I think I think that's kind of like the idea of it. Like it's just like dripping. Whoop. 
Didn't mean to switch from my logo. Excuse me, sir. Okay, there we go. Hang on. Before I do anything else, I need to copy and paste this so I don't lose the original just in case. Okay, now we can now we may begin. Okay. Also I should probably like turn off the 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 top layer or any and everything. Yeah, here we go. I will need, however, the reference layer. Here we go. Alright, now this is how you do it. It needs to be sharper though. It it can't be like these like too it can't be like too goopy. It needs to be have like a sharpness to it. There we go. So that's... That doesn't feel quite right. I feel like this part here is too thick. Okay, there we go. That's That feels a little better. Okay, that's that's a decent looking kind of metallic tea. Okay, then this one is okay. Then the O. Okay, the O is very unique. It it almost reminds me of like ragged of like a ragged shirt or something, or like a bedsheet ghost. Baby, baby's first metal band typography. Yeah, that's what this stream has turned into. But you know, it's good to flex your muscles and do something different like this every now and again. I'm not complaining by any stretch of the imagination. This is fun. Yeah, you know, I am trying to like. I think I think the trick really was to kind of nail the type the kind of letter spacing first because that then it can all just kind of fit together like this. There we go. Okay. And kind of like this. Okay. No, it's much more of like, of like a smooth curve, like this. Almost like a high heel. The shape, that's, that's what the shape reminds me of a little bit. trimming this. Perfect. And 
And then these two are kind of joined together like this. Man, if you've never seen a, per, uh, a car detailer... Okay, so... Cars are very interesting because a lot of the kind of detail work that you do on them is very much still like brushwork. You know, you can't, obviously you could have a machine painted, but for stuff like painting, sometimes you have to hand paint stuff, right? I, I've seen it in this one show on Netflix. I think it was called like, uh, I don't remember what the show was called actually. I think it was like West Valley Mechanics or something. But essentially, they and they, the guy that was um, decorating the car, he had to very often kind of just go in and draw the lines himself. And the fact, the kind of steadiness of the hand that I imagine he must need to do that was just astounding. Yeah, as, as somebody who has the, all the steady handedness of a chihuahua on caffeine, I admire that skill a lot. Particularly because it is, you know, kind of traditional art, kind of oriented, you know, more kind of in the classical school of being able to hold the brush in your hand and having that kind of fine motor control. I, I really admire that. You know, that, what what I do here, you know, I, I kind of... It, it's a little bit of like cut and take. Just do what you can with whatever you've got. But with that, it's like you do it on your first try or you have to start all over again. That's very impressive to me. I would never do it, but I but I am I, w I will say that I am impressed. There we go. No, no, hang on, that doesn't feel right. Okay, I see what I see. I kind of see what's what we need to do. Okay, I don't know. I don't get this. Hang on. Okay, so it's a little bit like a shark almost. I think maybe I I, I should do the bottom first and then try and do the top. I think that might that might be a bit more fruitful than whatever it is that I'm trying to do here. And you know, it doesn't have to be like one to one. I can do I can take a couple of artistic liberties with it. Okay, that feels decent. That somehow looks even more like a fish, though. Well, speak, see no evil, speak no evil. Ooh, wait, I kind of like that. Hang on. I mean, eh, mm, mm, eh. Oh, hang on. Okay, I think from there we can move on to the... God, I will say though... I, the, the most that I remember about it, like a metal band is... The, not even like what I remember the most about a metal band, but like... The thing that I remember most about a metal band logo is that this dude took a picture of a tree bush and said that, hey, I, li I like your metal band logo. And he put up some comparison pictures and they literally, and most of them looked a lot like that tree bush. Like, it, 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 it was like this bush with exposed roots. And it, lo and it looked like a whole bunch of garbled lines. 
And he was like, hey, I like your metal band logo. <laughs> that being said, somebody then posted a picture of a bunch of different metal bands. Kind of, I think it was from some huge event that was going on. And that ended up, and there was one single metal band that had like bubbly kind of like, like this kind of writing, like very bubbly writing. And it was named Party Cannon. And I remember that distinctly. I, I remember that very clearly. Just having that kind of whiplash of like all these kind of very samey looking metal bands. And then just Party Cannon right there in the middle. Smack dab. Okay. I don't know why I'm looking at his face when I need to be looking at his shirt. There we go. Like, that's gonna give me the answers. Like, I'm just looking at him like, why? Did, how, how did you do this? Tell me your secrets, Catboy. <laughs> Speak to me your wisdom. Okay, and then from there... Gotta... Okay, then there's the R. And that one reminds me a little bit of a cat itself. Man. Okay, kind of like that. Oh yeah. So, oh car boy, oh oh cat boy, we're really in it now. <laughs> Oh yeah, I actually did find out the difference between seltzer water and soda water. It's actually what makes it bubble. Soda water just has so just has a um, sodium bicarbonate or baking soda in it. Uh, so seltzer water has some kind of like acid or something. Yeah, I, I I finally found out wh why what the difference was, and I remember that I was like looking it up. Like I was like I, w I was. Do you ever like have one of those questions where you're like? Okay, I I want to find this out, but I don't want to look it up just yet. Now that was that was me for with this for a couple of days. Okay, and this other part is also kind of accented like that. Okay, there we go. And that's gonna kind of... I see what happened, okay. And then this other part is kind of like dragged down from it, okay. I know this doesn't look like it makes any sense, but it'll make, it'll all come together very soon. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Now that's fairly faithful to the logo, but I feel like there's still it's still missing a couple of things. So maybe okay, something like that might help a little bit. And maybe something like I don't know about this. I don't know about the shape. Okay. A little better. I like this a little better. I'm gonna add another little like spike right here just, just because I feel like it. Okay, and I think that a lot of it is also the line weight. So hang on. Yeah, narrow down. 
this one here, this one here, this one here. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. Hang on. That boy's too skinny now. Hang on. Feed him a sandwich. Get him a hoagie. Okay. There we go. Yeah, you can see that, that happens in a couple of other places here too, here and there too. Hang on. Uh, connect vector layer lines. Just line width. No, redraw. No weight. Uh, line width. Here we go. Ooh, that was kind of fancy, but not what I was looking for. Okay, what is going on here? <laughs> I need to get myself a giant poster of Hatsune Miku so I can do that th that bit from the good place where the dude's like, oh, oh, Rihanna, we're really in it now. Or I don't remember who, 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 uh, I forgot his name now. It's been a while since I've watched The Good Place. But yeah, he's like, Oh, Rihanna, we're really in it now. <laughs> I need to get myself like a Miku poster or something to, so I can do that as well. I used to have a, jo a, bit, a pretty decently big Jotaro poster that I used to do that with. Oh, Jotaro, we're really in it now. <laughs> okay, then that's... Okay, I'm going to need to drag the reference layer up to around here so I can actually not have to teleport back and forth for, for it, because that's getting a little annoying. Okay. I'm gonna move the P a little bit to the right here. Okay, then over here. Okay, I see, I see, I see a little bit, I think. And then Okay. And then it's gonna kind of branch out like this almost. Okay, I think I see it. Mm, no, no, it's a little bit thicker than that. Okay. And I get anxious when I have this many overlapping lines. <laughs> it's been years since I've started using vector layers, but it still gets me a little bit. It makes me nervous, like, what if I I forget which one that I'm not supposed to erase? Oh, uh, ah, ooh, ah. Uh. It's all that kind of thing. Very nerve-wracking. Yeah, you, you can't you can't see it behind the funny little rice man, but but behind the camera, I'm like dabbing at my eyebrow, I'm wiping away my sweat. Oh my god, what, where, where do these lines go? What does it all mean? <laughs> I remember watching that movie Airplane when I was like fairly young. I remember I remember I was, I specifically sought it out because I remember you know kind of like from my usual method TV tropes. I found out about it and I was like, oh yeah, this is the thing that killed like the Saster movies. And I I have to say it's actually a very funny film. Some of the jokes really hold up well. Some not some, not all of them, but a lot of them do. Not all of them, but most of them hold up very well. No, slapstick comedy never gets old. I imagine even the... Actually, no, hang on. I was gonna say, like, I'm now imagining a... some Sumerian society where they had, like, Punch and Judy type shows between Gilgamesh and Enkidu. But I, I think those were, like, worship... those dudes were, like, worshipped like gods, so I'm not sure that they would have those. Okay, I think I see what happened here. Okay. 
Okay, and then it's gonna kind of go like this. No, this P is completely fucked. I got. I think. I, I think we gotta start over here. You know, I gave it the old college try, but my god, this P is ridiculous. Didn't I already have a P somewhere around here? No, I had a T. That's different. Okay. All right, take two. Let's see. Okay. I also gotta get the O and the P away from it just very quickly. There we go. Okay. This is gonna kind of come in like this. Okay, here's an idea. All right, maybe in okay. So we do we've got this here, and then we make it go like this. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think we can work with this. some of these lines here. That's the simplify tool. Didn't mean to use that. Adjust line width. Here we go. Okay, there we go. What the? This is not what I want to use at all. Okay, there we go. We can use the okay, and then we can kind of clone these guys a little bit. Hang on. Got an idea for how to bump this up a couple notches. There we go. Yeah, okay, I'm making an executive decision to give this this hole here an additional ver vertex. Okay. Okay, there we go. That is a respectable looking P. Okay. Then we can just co and clone this for the other P and the O we've already made. So, all right. Okay. 
Connect, 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 vector line. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Sayonara, you two. We have your replacements. Okay. There we go. Not what I meant to do. Hang on. There we go. Ooh. Okay, oops. Alright, then this one here. Copy and paste that. Booyah. That's a very respectable metal logo, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay. Now then. To business. We have two. Okay, so... From what I can see, it's kind of darker up top. And then it kind of gra gradiates into this pink here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get pick a nice kind of like purplish darker and dark color. Uh, add that to this layer here. Really, this actually looks pretty good. Even if it's a knockoff, I think it. I think I did a fine job with it. It occurs to me that it, it might have been easier to just ping Toast and ask him to give me the original file. But, uh, <laughs> that's, since when have I taken the easy path, honestly? <laughs> okay. Selection from layer, create selection. Okay, add a new layer. Thick paint, uh, thick oil paint, sounds good. All right, uh, hang on, Catboy on the, cat, Catboy on the screen. Uh, This one seems good. Okay, then dash that back out. Okay. Get him warmer. Okay, maybe this is this pen is like too big. Hang on, this might be Yeah, that's a little bit more manageable. It also has like this kind of white outline almost. But okay, so what I'm thinking is put all these in a box, copy and paste that, merge it together, copy and paste that, merge it like this, make this text here underneath the original layer, make that wholly white. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, that looks a lot like the OG logo. Okay, we'll merge those two. Copy and paste it again to save the original and then convert layer into a image material layer. And now we can get cooking with gasoline. Because now, <clears throat> uh, hang on, I gotta do a quick stretch. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, now what we can do is actually manipulate it with the object tool. And that gives us a lot of neat advantages over just using a normal raster layer. For example, I can do a perspective transform on it. like that and then okay so skew maybe yeah a little bit of skew and then scale slash rotate there we 
There we go. I can just clip that to the shirt layer as I please. Or, you know, there's no actual shirt layer. I'll have to, I'd have to make a shirt layer, but I can make that real quick. And select color gamut, this thing here. Copy and paste that. Put this here. Clip. And bam. Thank you. Okay. Nice. All right. We did it. Now we can start shading. <laughs> God, that took way too long. <laughs> but that's okay, because shading should be decently quick. Okay. Um... All right. So first things first, I gotta get my. Okay, I gotta get. I gotta get a, a shadow reference for this. Okay, full opacity. Rasterize. Uh, no, hang on. I kind of want the light to be on his face. I feel like I do too many characters with the light not on their faces, and it comes back to bite me every time. Okay. Um. Light source, here we go. There we go. I think that's a good one. Okay. Rasterize. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So first way we do this is Okay, so arm okay, so I'll start with a shirt for once. Okay, good. Alright, cool. Okay, so that's gonna kind of turn up like this. Okay, cool. Yeah, I gotta be a little mindful of the wrinkles as well. Okay, hard erase. Here we go. So this site here is almost completely covered by shadow, so I'm gonna use that to my advantage when figuring out how to how to do this. this whole area here. I feel like I'm going to be using the soft erase tool a lot this time around. Okay, then... Is that all the shadows on the shirt? Uh, there'd be a little bit here on the shoulder. That's about it. Okay, then... Okay, vector erase this little part here. Oh, I somehow made this a clipping layer without realizing it. 
Hang on. Well, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Then... Wait, I've got an idea. Okay, so this is how we do it. Okay, so remove the clipping status from, status from this one, and this one, and this one too. Put it all in this folder, and then set this to clipping. Boom. Brain, genius brain stroke move. Okay, then I'll use the soft eraser right here too. This is where it's supposed to go, right? Yeah, okay. It is, it is. I was just panicking for a moment. As I am wont to do. Okay, then... That is going to... What, what else I... Okay, what else can I do? Okay, so... I, oh, the shoes. Okay, we can get this done early for a change. You know, that's that's very rare. I don't usually do the shoes early on in the shading and everything. And like I said, they're kind of a pain in the keister, but... You know, unique situations call for unique solutions. Okay. Oh, the wristbands too, of course. go. Then like this. This one too. The nails. I forgot the nails. Okay, that's minor though. That's not worth freaking out over. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think... I, I don't think we need to have like a full-blown freak out over the, missing the nails. Not like if we forgot a tail or the entire back part of the hair, like I did that one time. You know, this is a minor correction. It literally took all of five seconds. I think we, I think we were okay to be chill with it. Okay. Um, okay, from there... Pants, I think. Pants would be the next logical step. Yeah, I'm a regular guy. I shade, I shade, my, I shade my layers one pant at a time. this one missing again okay perfect all right um right i was looking at the shading reference okay that's gonna be this is the shading layer right no oh this wait no that can't be right what am i okay Oh, I see what happened. Okay, never mind. I, I understand what's happening now. I think there I think there was just a huge misunderstanding. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. That's gonna kind of branch outward like this. almost yeah making sure to have jam have its own its own little shadow on the pants as well. Okay, then 
we use the soft eraser for this part here. And then we can also apply it even like right here, right in this part in the middle. There we go. That creates a very nice kind of natural shade look. And then from there... Yeah, just a couple of things here and there for quality of life. And then, you know, for the other, other loops as well, I'll add some shading. Maybe a slightly darker shading for this part here. Hang on, I've got an idea of how to do this. Um, okay, brush, watercolor round brush. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit more curvature. I, I'm sure he, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Okay, then from there, is there anything else that's like white like this? I don't think it, there is. Uh, I might have used this as extra color to give a little extra shading to jam here, though. There we go. Yeah, let's set, let's shade jam right now. Why not? Okay, so I'm guessing it would kind of be a similar situation to the pants. So it's about like this kind of shape on the curvature of the shadow. I feel like jam would make make for a really good Digimon design. I don't know. It's, it's it's just got that vibe for me. Oh, hang on. I think I, I can make it a little bit more like like to the character to have a little bit of fluff right here. There we go. Here. Okay, refer to all layers. Perfect. Hmm, no, hang on. Select. There we go. Yeah, th this is a little bit more convenient too because I can I can knock out all the different parts that have that same kind of shading cell in one go. Okay, so Yeah, I might have to edit the thigh highs a little later, though. Okay, so first of all, add a little bit of shading here. Definitely a little bit over here, too. Okay, then. Okay. There we go. Okay. And over here too. Cool. Oh, looks like I missed a spot here. Hang on. Ah, but I can't really get... Okay, wait, no, I can't get to it. Hang on. Sometimes I overlook very simple solutions to my problems, and it's... A bit of a problem in and of itself. Okay. Hmm. 
There we go. And then we can exclude it again. Yep. Perfect. Okay, then from there, what can we do? Hmm. No, I think that's about it for the leggings. Um, or thigh highs, whatever. I keep I, I keep changing what I call them. I'm allowed to do that. Okay, blending. I think that's gonna be the way to do this one. here that way we can blend it out a little bit more I think that kind of increases the sense of depth that they have okay there we go then we can add a couple of extra little creases here with the full color Like right here, right here. Okay, we'll need it right here too. There we go. Cool. Okay. Then, okay, the harness might also be a good time to do. Okay. just around the borders here for a little bit of extra flavor text. Okay, then blend that. This reminds me of a very specific flavor of ice cream that I haven't had in like decades. I don't know why this kind of like I think it was like this kind of mango flavored ice cream. I don't remember it, I don't remember it too well, but I remember it was like distinctly like sweet and mango flavored. This kind of combination of red and yellow makes me think of it. Hmm. Okay, with the brush we go. Middle, we can do a little bit more. Okay, cool. And then we can do the same thing for the collar up here. I feel like there's some kind of weird joke you could make with collar ID. And chokers, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to make it, honestly. <laughs> you know, some, some puns aren't funny when you have to like, when they're kind of like in a can, if that makes sense. You know, puns are only funny if you can like, if if it strikes like a lightning from the blue. You know, you have to be on some ninja, on some ninja stuff to make a pun truly magnificent. Okay. Then I think we're good to move on to hang on. I'm gonna like texture blender. Here we go, there we go, there we go. So that might be interesting for this part too. Okay. Anyway, uh I think we can move on to the skin. Okay, so select, select our gamut, this thing here. Okay, over here. Okay. There we go. It's very subtle shadows. Not 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 nothing too fancy. Okay. 
All right, I might have to do a little bit of maximum effort right here. But that is, I am 100% okay with that. Hang on, I, I, I think I... Yeah, there we go. Okay, there was a little line there that was bugging me. It's gone now. But we can keep working on this. Okay, so then right here too. And I think that's about right. Okay, so then we're going to blend that this out. Okay, and then with the soft eraser, just kind of go for it like this. Okay, groovy. Uh, we might be able to do a little bit more right here, though. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, th I think that creates a much more interesting texture than just having it be plain like that. Okay, we can do that for the rest of it as well. Uh, I cannot forget the tattoos. I need to write it on my forehead or something. Okay, uh, friggin... Okay, the arm shadow. Yeah, the good news is I got a plan for the tattoos, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it pans out. Okay, there we go. I actually quite like the solid shadow for this, for the arm part. I feel like it gives it a bit more depth. Oh my god. I think, I think my stomach, my stomach just rumbled something awful. My apologies if you heard that. Oh, what? The? I thought I painted you guys. Hang on. These the nails are rebelling. There we go. Okay, now we can get back to business. Okay. Wait, am I on the right layer? Yeah, I should be, so why is this? Oh, I see, I've still got the selection inverted. There we go, okay, much better. Okay, blend this out a little bit like this. Soft eraser right here. Ooh, that looks nice. I like that. Okay. Then how's the rest of the hand in terms of shadows? Okay, there's some on the palm. And there's some on the kind of like foregrip of the thumb. Yeah, blend that out a little bit. And soft eraser right here. up like this. There we go. Okay, and then the other arm is going to get shaded like this. Got an idea here. No, no, that's not gonna work. All right, hard race. Okay, then like that. 
Okay, we got a little bit of shadow going on here. There should be also some right here as well. And yeah, not to be too nitpicky, but there should be some right there. Okay, then blend this out a little bit forward like this. Hang on, I think I got a sneeze. Okay. Oof, that was quite the sneeze. I'm so glad I have the mute button handy for those. Okay, soft. Erase that. Blunt this out a little bit. And then soft erase it back in. logical step. Okay, then over here. Cool. There is a hole there. I don't like that. Just the soft eraser right around this part here, I think. And then over here, too. No, actually, this will kind of spread a little more. Okay, there we go. No, something about, about, about this particular kind of shadow, shading tone, when kind of softened like that, doesn't feel right. Maybe I should try the uh, the brush like this. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, wait, do I have this on replace alpha? Yes, I do. Okay, good. I was gonna say, I've kind of fallen in love with the brushes replace alpha setting. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what in exactly the hick and heck, hick it means. The hick? <laughs> But uh, whatever it does, I, it seems to be working f fantastically for me. So, you know, I'm going to keep plugging away at it. Yeah, the, the variant, the very rare variant of it, if it's don't broke, don't fix it. If it, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if it is, if it isn't, if you don't know how it works, don't bother breaking it. Okay. And then this is going to kind of spread around the face like this. Okay. There we go. I think it might be less that I just make very dramatic lighting choices like this. And it's more so that because of the way that I translate shadows from the model, it just kind of ends up being like this. I think that might be the case. I mean, heck, it's not, not, it's not my fault that they forgot to give the poor thing lips. No, hang on, that feels weird. All right, what about like maybe not so much erasure here? Okay, very subtle, very subtle. You know, e e easy going with it. Not too much, not too little. Hmm. Okay, and then we can just kind of increase the brush size and kind of apply it all across the face here. That's the case. We should we should also probably do the lip here. There 
There we go. Not to mention, I think past this point it would just be kind of like completely shaded like this. Okay, and then the ears. I think those would be almost completely shaded as well. Except for some very small points of light here and there. There we go. Maybe if I change the tone a little bit, that'll help. Hmm. Okay, more saturation, maybe. A little, uh, just a little bit more saturation. A little bit more luminosity, too, maybe? Hmm. Okay, I think, that, I think that's kind of like a happy medium for me. Okay. And then... The thighs, I forgot the thighs. Can't, cannot forget the thighs, my god. Okay. There we go. Justice is served. like this. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. And right here. Then over here too. Okay, cool. Um, what else is there? I'm not sure. The hair. Obviously the hair. Okay. <laughs> this might be a little tricky. I don't know where the... Okay, I don't know where the hair stops and the ears begin. Alright. Uh, select color gamut. This thing. This part here. Is there anything else that's... Oh, right. The tail. Oh, the tail might be a little challenging, too. Oh well, I'll I'll cross I'll cro I'll cross that bridge once I burn it. Something like that. I keep the thing is right. I remember th I know that the phrase is supposed to go like we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but at the same time I've perverted it, I've perverted it enough with like the whole burn thing. Like you know we'll cro we'll cross that bridge when we burn it, or we burn we'll burn that bridge when we cross it. I think it's like the original kind of perversion of it. But I've started say in saying so many weird things in conjunction to it that it started becoming difficult to remember, like, the actual order it should go in. <laughs> like, now I'm thinking about the the bridge crossing to burning logistics. You know, you don't you don't want to bur burn then cross it, you know? Then you're then you're just fucking swimming or something. I don't know, what- what- you usually cross a body of water on a bridge, don't you? Yeah, you'd be swimming. Okay. Uh, curve in like this. Wrong layer. Crap. Okay, here's what we do. Okay, select color gamut. This thing here. Copy that. Undo literally everything else. And then paste that in here. Boom. Day is saved. Okay, then from there. Okay. Do it like this. Yeah, I think this kind of helps to the kind of spikiness of the hair stand out. Okay, then 
here. There we go. Okay, then from there, yeah, right here too. Hmm, not quite. There we go, that's a little better. Still got this weird bump to it though. <laughs> Are his ear puffs okay? They are a slightly brighter color, so I'm gonna go ahead and take and borrow that ear puffs. I think that's the best way I can describe these things. They're like ear puffs. They're puffs from the, for the ears. Okay. Wait, am I on the wrong layer again? Oh, I sure am. Okay. Wait, no. Then, wait. Where? Oh, I see. I see, I see where I went wrong. Okay. Uh, okay. The important thing when making like fluffy things is to just make cloud shapes first and then ask questions later. You know, don't don't even worry about it, boss. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right, and all that's left is kind of the glasses and we'll do those last. Um, okay, the tongue doesn't need too much attention. There we go. Also need like a contrast color for the metal. Okay, we need to select the color gamut for the metal part here. Okay, yeah. So we got we got some we got a couple of them. Uh, these shouldn't take too long though. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going like super crazy on the metal shading this time around. I remember the one time I did that. I, it was with this one other piece. Ironically enough, it was also for Art Fight, where this dude had a giant drill for a hand, and I just went ham on learning how to how to shade chrome. That was an exceedingly difficult thing to do, but I, I eventually got some of the basics down, and you know, I retained a little bit of it. I don't draw metal enough to be a specialist at it, but I can hold my own, I think. And really, that's all that I need. All right, I'm never—I'm not looking to be a specialist in anything. I'm not looking to be number one at anything. I just want to be able to render everything that I want to render. If that makes sense. No, I want to be able to have a plan in case I want to do anything. Okay, the rings might be a problem. Okay. 
Okay, get over here. Okay, I think that's... something about this bottom one is bothering me. I think I did mix up me the way that this is supposed to be shaded. God damn it, I'm on the wrong layer again. Well, it's fine if, if, I, if I mess up this one around a little bit. Mess around with this one a little bit. Or maybe it's like I'm not using the right tone, so maybe I need to use this yellow tone back here. Oh, yeah, bingo. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind as well. Okay, then... Back here. Over here. this to do a little bit of this okay perfect and then we can do the same thing for this one okay perfect okay that's that part done then we got the button here on the jeans that's like a five second thing That's weird. Why isn't it? Oh, I see. It's shading from the pants. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. And then... Okay. Okay, then from here, okay, it'll have the shading, like, around here. Okay, anything else that we may be missing? I think, uh, no, I think we got everything. Okay, cool. And then, okay, the tail. I think the tail is the only thing left. And the heart-shaped things. But thankfully I didn't forget anything this time, I think. If I did, I'm going to kick myself for, you know, kind of, I don't know how to, how, I don't know how to say it, like provoking that, like tempting fate, I think that's the phrase. Okay. Okay, I need an even bigger brush. a little bit of the what is this tool called again it's like a ruled line one I think ah oh, whatever yeah uh, opacity very low but yeah this way this way we can make like a nice fluffy texture Uh, 
maybe the blending eraser as well, or like the wet bleed blender. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but it, but sure, bring it on. Uh, that that kind of flattened it a little bit. How about the textured blender? Okay, I think I think then the glasses and then we're done. Let's see how that looks with the logo. Ooh, kind of want to turn it around a little. There we go. Is there like a way to put it on a blending layer? Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. Wait, this is gonna be kind of like... Maybe I can make this across the shirt even with the holes. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, rice bag once again. Uh... Okay, then... Let's do my usual thing, and just kind of put these all in one basket. A phrase? Do you ever, like, think of yourself up a phrase and then just kind of die for a chance to say it? Because one of the... <laughs> one of the ones that I've been thinking of recently, one of a phrase that entered into my head and I've just been dying to say is, I'm a little busy putting all my eggs into one basket here. <laughs> it, it, it's like, I feel like it's just such a funny little thing to say. It, okay, I, I forgot to shade his eyes a little bit. I, I realize that now. I've realized my, my error. The error of my ways. But that can be very easily corrected. <sighs> okay, here, here, and here. Okay, and right here. There we go. See, minimal, 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 minimal. Ah, yes, the most populous kingdom of Animalia, the Mimmel. I don't think... Okay, no. Ma mammal is a kind of category. It's not in a kingdom in and of itself, I think. I don't think. N kingdom. Mammalian. <laughs> okay. Um, but seriously, though. Um, okay. So, I'm gonna do the, the trick to soften up the lines a little bit. So, you do a little bit of Gaussian blur on, top, on the top layer. Okay, then you switch it to be like very dark and very saturated as well. Darker, darker. Ooh, I think that, okay, that's... Hmm. Not green, maybe like a brownish color. Yeah, like that. And then you set that to clipping and there we go. Hmm, maybe we can go like slightly different. I don't know. What would it what would it look like with purple? I quite like that. God damn it! I forgot the glasses, didn't I? Oh, that's fine. I can I can correct that like right now, right now. Okay. Uh, so these are gonna be like reddish. Yeah, they're they're like bright red, <clears throat> or like bright pink, I suppose. Every single time, I'm like, I'm not going to forget something. I forget something. I, every time, without failure. <laughs> it's almost comical at this point. It's a bit. I'm doing a bit. Uh, who knows? I, okay, from now on, I'm going to pretend that I'm forgetting on purpose as a joke. And hopefully, that might make people believe that I'm actually not forgetting this. <laughs> 
That's gonna be the. Th I think that's gonna be the strat from now on. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Uh, oop. Okay, clip this and then. Hmm. Okay, so maybe I need to make a selection from the layer and then try that. Come on, bud. There we go. Okay, cool. Now then, uh, background. That's the, that. Okay, no, wait, no. We've got we've got actually a couple other steps. Okay, merge selected layers, and now for my favorite part, the gradient mapping. Oh, that's actually kind of fun, but I'm, I'm, I was actually hoping for one that was like a little bit more broody, almost. Uh, ooh, wait, maybe if I flip this one. No, okay, nope. Never mind. Hmm. I don't know, I'm not feeling any of these just now. Okay, what about the sky ones? Okay, maybe this one. Maybe this one will be something we can use. Not on darken. Lighten might be interesting. Yeah, okay. We'll do lighten, maybe. Let's see what else there is. Okay, so there's screen. Uh, ooh. Okay, overlay is kind of interesting. Not do I like it as much as lighten though? No, I do not. Okay, what about okay, soft light, hard light, whatever. Okay, then what about okay, this one's interesting as well. Lighten. Wait, lighter lighter color. I see. Okay. Wonder what the what if there's like a meaningful difference between lighter color and lighten. If there is, I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, oh snap, do I have my, okay, do I have my old background texture? I'm not sure that I do, but I might. Uh, because I think, I feel like that would be actually perfect for him. Where is it? I had it, I had it somewhere around here. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Hey, you guys remember this? This is what I used to stream with all the time. <laughs> God, that's that brings back memories. It it looks a little different than I remember almost, but you know, I think it, I think it'll be per 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 perfectly for serviceable. I try so hard with English every fucking day of my life. I I spent I've spent more than more than half of my life learning this stupid language, and every single day it just d does me dirty like this without failure. Unfucking believable. Okay. Okay, wait, hang on, I've got an idea. So, what we can do, maybe, is... Okay. Alright, hang on, tuck, tuck away the cat boy for a moment. Put the put the cat, cat boy in the, in the pen for a second. Hang on. Alright, so, what if I could, like... Okay, cool. It, it, okay, I can make this work. I can make this work. Uh, okay, alt select... Okay, no. I just need, like, this part here. Okay. Then, in okay, delete all. Oops, no, wait, wait, that's not what I meant to do. No, come on, what is this? What? <laughs> I don't understand what I've done. Okay, you know what? Forget this. Um, marquee tool, rectangle. Boom, boom, boom. Invert, delete everything else. Okay, why does that why did that have to be such a federal fucking issue? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, uh okay, then we we're gonna wanna set the background layer to this color here so that it kind of blends in nicely. Uh 
Okay, then convert this layer to an image layer. To an image material layer, I should say. My bad. And then tiling. There we go. Okay, now we're cooking. Okay, okay, okay. Then... All right, bring back the cat boy. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, I've got an idea. So maybe we can have the this kind of huge thing here, but we'll also select the color gamut here. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, maybe... Okay, what about- you heard the man calling the cat boys. Cat bo cat, major cat boy event happening at, at 9pm at 9, uh, 9 Eastern Time. You heard it here first, folks. Make sure, make sure to board up your walls. Make sure to pack your supplies. If you've got a basement, you know where to go. Okay. How did I do this before? No, that's not quite right. Oh wait, rasterize. I can just rasterize it. I'm a oh come on. Brain, we're supposed to be smarter than this. I forgot the fucking tattoos though. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, okay. We got this. Okay, uh we might, might we might as well finish the background first. I mean we're already this deep in. Uh what about uh wasn't there one that was like this? Kind of like Mosaic effect? Pattern. Image material, maybe. Favorites? Oh, hey, this this works also. Okay, hang on. Okay. Okay, I, I think I see I see I think I see where I went wrong. Okay. So first of all, I have to make this black and white. Monochrome expression. No. Honestly, just him on the white background looks kinda nice. Uh okay. What about Okay. I'm gonna try something. All right, first I need to, I need a little bit more space here. Please and thank you very much. Okay, then how do I? Wait, what just happened? Okay, whatever. Uh, select color gamut. There we go here. Okay, and we are going to expand that by a, a couple of pixels, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna- I'll take it. Okay, then here we go. Can I not do anything with this? Okay, wait, no, there- Okay. Never mind, I just cracked the code. It's all cool. Oh, wait, no, hang on. I met. I wish it was a little bit easier to, for me to get around with this mouse that I've got. Okay. Why... why are you not... Oh, I need to expand it a little bit, okay. Okay, I ha I should clarify that I have no idea what the fuck is happening. <laughs> I feel like it's it's only fair that I clarify that first. Okay, this works. I am content with this. All right, I'll take that. Okay, however, we do need to figure out how to put these tattoos on them. Okay, uh, 
Okay, get rid of this first. Yeah, gonna have to get rid of it. Or actually, no, I'll turn it off so I remember what settings I used. But okay, uh... Okay. What I'm gonna do is... Do I have a snake pattern br oh, brush? No, I do not. I know I don't have that. I was asking that rhetorically. Okay, what about... Hang on, I know. I think I have an idea again. All right, so... Bringing back the reference layer. If I can just kind of angle that so I can see it more properly. I like how there's just a big hole in it there now, too. <laughs> okay, okay. Enough goofing. All right, no more goofing. No more goofing until the job is done. All right, maybe a little bit of goofing. We, I'm, I'm not a strong enough man to say absolutely no goofing. There's, there, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy. I'm not the kind. I'm not a kind of absolutely zero goofing kind of guy. You know, there, there can be a little bit of goofing. We can do a little goofing. We do a little goofing here. Okay. Okay, and this is gonna kind of cross over like this. And it's gonna kind of cross over like this. And, you know, kind of further on upward like that. Okay, we'll worry about that in just a second. But for the moment, let's just kind of get the pattern down, right? Let's see. I like that it does a little loop-de-loop -loop back here. Okay, uh... Okay. And then... Across the arm like this. Okay, then we turn off this layer here so that we can actually... Actually, we're gonna have to turn off a bunch of layers. Let me stuff these guys into a clown car so I don't have to worry about them individually again. There we go. I like the fact that when... <laughs> somehow, like, it feels noisier when there's a lot of color... Like, of colors. I don't mean just in the sense that, you know, there's visual noise, but I mean it literally feels quieter now. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, here we go. Okay, uh, selection from layer. Now, I'm about to do a little bit of bamboozling, I think, because I have in mind the perfect shape for the exact opposite. For This might be... Okay, this might either be... Okay, this is going to work. I'm calling it. This is going to work. So this is actually a brush that is supposed to be little bits of rice, but I'm gonna co-opt it for snake scales. Don't tell don't tell toast. Don't do not tell toast. Alright. Actually, no, it's kind of appropriate, like I said. It, it, like, weirdly enough, it feels appropriate that I'm using a rice brush for this for this part. Like, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of me is with him. Yeah, we'll go with that. Remember, remember, nobody talks, everybody walks. I don't imagine he'd actually get mad about it. I think he'd also think it's funny, but still, it's a little embarrassing that I have to do these sorts of things. We can do a little extra layer here and there. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I think it creates almost like a nice effect if you layer it correctly. You know, it creates like a sort of depth to it. Finish it off with this. Okay, get the reference layer back in here because I need a little bit of assistance with this. Okay, so the snake doesn't have any kind of specific kind of eye color, so I'm just gonna make it have red eyes. And I think this is like a milk snake or a mouse snake. I don't remember what their actual name is. I remember I got to hold one when I was very young. Yeah, I, I remember that was like a like a we went to like this animal park and they had a small and they had a, like a small reptile section and I got to hold a couple of these bad boys. I got super freaked out when they started like slithering though. As snakes are wont to do. Yeah, I don't think I, I just don't think that the reptiles and I are compatible ultimately. You know, I, I love them to death. I mean I'm I'm the number one iguana stan in the in I don't know the world. <laughs> no, 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 that's too much. Probably at least at least in the in the nearest 17 kilometers. I imagine I'm the biggest iguana stand. So you know, it's not it's not like I don't have room in my heart for the little guys. It's just that you know, I, I wouldn't. I definitely, I certainly wouldn't keep one as a pet. I forgot are these flowers. I think these are flowers. Oh, okay, yeah, they're supposed to be like these like buds here. Okay. I am going to get myself a download brush, which has those flowers on them. Okay, it'll be somewhere around here, right? Cherry blossoms, maybe? Oh, that is way too big. Uh, that's not quite what, what they are. Those are sparkles. That's not. Those are not flowers. Uh, these are all sparkles or of some kind, I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm not gonna use the petals either. Okay, I, th I think I'm gonna use the cherry blossoms. Okay, I see how it is. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm gonna go with this and then with this for the under layer. really reduce the brush size. Okay, here we go. Little by little we're getting there. Hang on, I notice a line here. There we go. Okay, back to whatever I was doing. which was, okay, right, the pedals across the arm. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, I think the tattoo should be finished and we can just clip those onto the under layer and hopefully we can find some way that they apply properly. Not quite, but we're getting there. Okay, I think linear light is our best choice. Wait, I've got an idea. Okay, so copy and paste normal. Okay, so this one will be linear light. But I'll make the top layer like a little bit more transparent. There we go. Okay, that comes through a little bit better. Perfect. Okay, now we should be just about ready to wrap up. Boom, okay. 
And then I am going to put my little signature up over here. There we go. Okay. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. That was also very difficult for... I think... I think, like... I don't know why, but the, these art streams have been... I don't I think it's maybe because it's a character that I don't understand too well. Like... Like, like for example, I mean, this... It's like a t-shirt, a harness, some shorts, uh, thigh highs. Technically speaking, this is a very simple outfit, but I don't know why these keep taking me the longest. <laughs> but every single time I have a lot of fun, so, you know, I'm not really complaining. All right, let's head on over to the just chatting screen so I can uh, send you guys off. There we go. Okay. Uh, is anybody streaming today? But yeah, that should be Art Fight just about wrapped up for us. Now, for a lot of people, this summer ended, went on like any other, but um, I think I had a lot of fun, th this art fight. Oh shit, Melita's playing Fall Guys, let's go. Alright, hang on. Okay, um, tomorrow I'll be playing Valhalla. Um, I think that's going to be the end of Valhalla itself. I think, that, I think that's going to be when we finish the game. So I'm very, looking, I'm very much looking forward to that. Th this game has been incredibly fun so far. So I'm looking forward to its kind of grand finale, so to speak. So yeah, I hope you all will join me for that, and I will see you all later. Bye!